We're live. Why am I holding? Maybe it's to keep me on track so I can get off at a good time. So as you guys are chiming into this live broadcast and it's noisy outside, I want to talk to you about what I'm doing in these broadcasts. So people are slowly coming in and the point I will go into macros and the meal timing. If you're watching the old videos, don't do that. <laughs> They're old for a reason. You're in ketosis. All right, Keisha, what's up? So I'm saying hello to everyone, and I've had people DM me telling me to not say hello. I'm not listening to you trolls, so do not DM me and tell me how to run my broadcast. What's up, everyone? What's up, Escobar? What's up, Suzanne and Russ? Yes, what is up, James? Yes, I made it on the live. Yeah, what's up? Awesome. Love that everybody's coming in. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Thank you. That's the name, by the way, honey. What's up, Bruce and Anthony? Preston? <laughs> Ada? Uh, love you back. Oh, yes, from Arizona. Thank you, Sarah. You're in the uh, NYC. Hello. What's up, everyone? So you guys are chiming in. Thank you, thank you. 4.2 millimolar when you wake up. Too high ketones, and I'll go into that as well. Yes, you're glad to see me live. That's awesome, Tiffany. I'm going to go into... Uh, the details. I'm going to go into the macros and the timing of it, and then I'm going to take the questions, and then I'm going to bounce, but I will definitely preface uh, help with diabetes. Okay, Anthony, so if you have any particular questions, I don't know if you're type 1 or 2, big difference. 4.2 glu 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 glucose, uh, Escobar meant. Uh, yeah, that's in range, but we need to know what your ketones are. So you don't have any questions here. We're going to listen and give me support. Thank you, Keishel. You're type 2. So that's definitely you can reverse the symptoms of type 2 diabetes. And I'm going to explain to you how and how to get rid of cellulite. Tiffany's like, she's got like brain, like memory beyond measure. That's not a goldfish mine right there. Ketones, so 1.3, 2.3 yesterday. Okay, you only should test them once. So I don't know why you have two numbers. Okay, yes, it's not only okay for type 2 diabetics to do keto, but you can actually reverse the symptoms and be non-symptomatic. But as we go into this and people are joining this broadcast, I want to remind everyone, because I'm getting DMs of people telling me how to do my broadcasts, and we've got these commentators here. <laughs> we've got critics in the house telling me how to do them, and I'm not listening to you. So do not DM me and tell me not to say hello to the guests coming into the broadcast. That's what I do. And I'm answering people's questions and I tend to dart all over the place. And I'm not going to change that either. Period. Period. It's crazy how people are telling you what to do. I'm doing free broadcasts. I'm answering questions at rapid speed. And somebody's telling me how to do my broadcast. And it's crazy because if a person would do the same broadcast and answer the questions in the same veracity, I might listen to them. But when you're sitting from your armchair telling somebody how to do something that you've never done, zip it. I know this is the perspective of the audience, but you just cannot do everything the individuals want you to do. You have to go and just like keto, you have to take all of the, the information and choose the best that works for you. And that's what I'm going to do. So do not DM me and tell me, do not, I am a 50 year old woman. Do not tell me how to do my broadcast, okay? Because I won't listen. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, people are saying that you need to eat carbs for energy. So I'll go into these types of details. And okra, I think the carbs are too many. Um... Okay, Emily just joined, I guess, the keto course, which I provide on Facebook, and it's uh, much good information. Bam! 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 You know when we get older, like, we're not these young, I'm not like some 20-year-old little snowflake, okay? <laughs> I'm not a snowflake. Um, all right. 
So I want to talk to you about the meal timing and the macros. So I'm not going to bam, bam, bam. I'm not going to, oh, uh, you're watching all the replays. Awesome. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go into the title of this video and I'm going to take your questions and then I'm going to bounce and I'm not listening to any DMs afterwards unless it's praising me. <laughs> I know I am a badass. Yeah, don't mess with me. All right. So here we go. Thumbs up, you guys. We've got 77 people in the chat, and I'm about to bang out this information. So liking the broadcast gets me more viewability. All right. So um, you, have, I, you have me on your TV. Ooh. Oh, jeez. I hope it's not HD. Okay, here we go. So let's break down the macros. You want to have your fats, your proteins, and your carbohydrates. Those are called macronutrients. Short macros so for people who are confused now with that said you want to have fatty meats so tuna and chicken breasts bye bye tilapia gone white fish gone so y'all pescatarians out there eating white fish you cannot adapt on white fish with that said so with the types of fatty meats would be you know especially if you're doing things like lamb you want it closer to the rib you're going to get more fat closer to the organs yes 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 okay guys so I'm gonna continue uh, keto does reverse type 2 diabetes and I will go into that after this James so with that said reverses the symptoms uh, so with that said um, so you're gonna have things like uh, beef obviously you want to make sure that it's grass-fed beef because cows get very sick on corn so it's the one animal I'm like you gotta do grass fed. If you can't afford grass fed, don't eat beef, period. So we got beef, ribeye is, like I said, anything that, near the rib is great. We got lamb near the rib. Uh, we don't want dry, uh, uh, leaner parts, obviously. Um, we've got duck eggs, we've got chicken eggs, we've got goose eggs in the egg family. Uh, we have all the dark meats on a chicken, so the, the thigh, the wing, the leg, we, uh, what else do we have? We have pork, so we want pastured pork. We want, really, we want the belly of the pork because it's very fatty and super high in vitamins. And what you guys don't realize is that if a human being or an animal is eating really, really well, right, and has a balanced gut biome, if you are, uh, if you have fat, that fat has vitamins in it, guys. It actually has vitamin D, E, A, and K really high amounts of these vitamins in the fatty parts of you. And that's the reason why when you start to, um, uh, like when your body burns fat at the last, it's not gonna burn fat first. So all you people on the treadmill, I don't know what you're thinking. The body's going to burn muscle first, fat second. Really, it's a survival mechanism. So if you were to live outside, you'd want to eat your fat and in that fat's gonna be what? Vitamins. And that's the same thing for the fatty meats that we consume. So it's really important that you guys understand. Plus, you get in some, in some animals, you get sources of omega-3 or like butter or beef, omega-3s. You can get uh, conjugated, conjugate linoleic acid, arachidonic acid. These are amazing properties to help fix cells and heal the body as well in your fat. So yeah, she finally cut me on the live stream. All right, so um, uh, these you want fatty meats. So when people are like, they want to do fresh game, I'm like, you know, if you're out at a out at a restaurant and they only have lean meat like chicken breast, make sure that it's uncured. But on the daily, when you're shopping at the supermarket, you want fatty cuts of meat. That includes salmon, uh, sardines, anything that's of a fatty source. All right, now the um blah, blah, blah. the and i'm getting a amazon package they didn't deliver it to me this morning so i gotta make sure that it comes um so i gotta keep this around me so i can see it they're coming a second time all right so we also have our fats so as you guys know i've been coaching thousands of people because i've been doing keto for 10 years and coaching almost the entire 10 years of a lot of people. I had it, I had consultations today, 
yesterday, day before, and years and years and years of it. And so you learn through osmosis, uh, through the, being an autodidact, and you literally just see the consistency. So in the beginning, people were eating a lot of coconut oil and MCT oil. I did videos saying, eat this uh, MCT oil. But people's ketones and glucose became too unstable on these coconut medium chain triglycerides. Here's where I digress because you hear the sirens and that's me. I like to digress. So with that said, um, we want our fats to primarily come from uh, animal fat. So it doesn't mean that you don't have to have MCT oil or use it as a pre-workout or post-workout or coconut oil, which is only 60% MCT. Uh, it's not that you shouldn't use it, but I don't count it anymore when I coach people. Or the advice I give is to eat primarily animal fats. Now, the keto body likes monounsaturated fats as well, and that's an olive oil and avocado oil. But as you know, these oils are not always as stable. They tend to oxidize, and when you get olive oil from the supermarket, unfortunately, it tends to be mixed with canola oil because they are cheap up in there. So we kind of get duped a little bit on the quality of oil, so we got to be very careful for that. But butter, so the fats would be mono in, in, in the context of avocado oil, olive oil. I don't really like seed oil, so stop asking about, uh, you know, uh, flax oil, uh, um, grape seed extracts, uh, um, any type of seed oils. No, we want to focus mainly on the animal fat and then if you have a salad or if you're trying to do um, fat in a tea and you can't tolerate, let's say, coconut oil, you could mix an avocado oil or an olive oil with an animal fat. So we want primarily animal fats. I came to this conclusion because so many people have their ketones rise in the presence of a lot of animal fat. The problem is with animal fats, is that not the oxidation problem, they oxidize a lot slower than seed oils. The problem is, or, or even avocado or coconut or uh, blah, 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 olive oil, the problem is with animal fats is some of you guys have histamine intolerance so bad, right, from damaging the gut, that the animal fats you're reacting on, like butter. So butter is primarily fat, right? It's the fat from the milk but you still have about a percent left of the whey or casein left. Some people are so sensitive to whey and casein, they can't even handle the 1%. Then they try ghee. And then even the clarified butter cannot be um, consumed with some people. And then they'll have to go towards lard. Or, and then a lot of people don't eat pork. So then people are trying tallow, beef tallow. And then the, they, they, they have a hard time to tolerate the tallow because they don't like the taste. So I'm trying to explain to people that doing keto is not for the faint at heart. You really, really need to go and find out where your prior health is as to know what types of fats to, and Kishel's like, smash the like button. We got almost 100 people in the chat and only 59 likes. So I'm doing more, and I've expressed this many times, I do more live broadcasts when people show me that they like what I'm doing. So I always tr try to get the like number up if you actually like what I'm doing. So pound out the likes and that gives me more view viewability and then I start doing more broadcasts. They're not scheduled, they're, they're literally, yes, Carrie Gold, <laughs> uh, keto model. <laughs> Thank you, Bay, Chris. Um, so yeah, smash the likes. With that said, um, I'll go into these questions that are popping up. Now, people watching the replay don't realize that I get a lot of questions. So people are saying, ignore it or turn off the chat. I'm not going to do that. I'll ignore it and then I'll look at it sometimes. So uh, here we go. Um, thank you, people who love what I'm doing. Um, all right, Preston, thank you for liking the stream. So with that said, so we've got our fats here. Animal fats are made out of mono, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturated fat, saturated SFAs, MUFAs, PUFAs, and SFAs. And these fatty acid profiles, these three fatty acid profiles are very similar to us as humans. 
Yes, yes, especially with monos in pork. Yes. The keto body, I know you guys don't do pastured pork or don't do pork, but the keto body really loves pork fat. Now, with that said, uh, uh, if you can get, it doesn't have to be pastured about the lard, but I prefer it to be. Uh, thank you that you can't wait for the, the book. And before I forget, you guys have an Instagram, which is Stephanie Keto, no wait, yeah, Stephanie Ketogenic. I have a bunch of names, so I kind of forget them. So Stephanie Ketogenic and my Facebook uh, fan page is Stephanie the Business with Quotes Person. Just to get that out, and my website is stephanieperson.com before I forget. And yes, I'm writing the Ultimate Keto book. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, uh, how you love my warrior workouts. Thank you. Yes, warrior workouts. Okay, so we got the fats covered, right? That the body, tend, the ketones tend to rise towards the fats that our body material, the fatty acids, are very similar to animal fat, and we are animals, and it works. Now, uh, coconut oil does, it is high in saturated fat, and the keto body does like saturates, but it really likes the, the very similar uh, fatty acid profile that you'd find in a human being. And that's when I see the ketone spike. On MCTs, they might do a short-term spike, but I don't see a lot of consistency in the range of 1.8 to a 3.0 ketone millimolars on coconut oil and MCT oil. It really starts stabilizing and the blood sugar with animal fat. So we've got the fats covered. Now, um, another thing is the carbohydrates. So, I mean, the thing that's quite interesting, you know, people are like, do you eat fruit? Do you eat fruit? Like non stop. Well, there's a lot of things with fruit. Right? Tomatoes are fruits, coconuts are fruits, olives are fruits, avocados are fruits, uh, zucchini is fruits, paprika is fruits, sabelpa. These are all fruits, people. Yes. So we tend to forget lemon, citrus, they're all fruits. And these are the fruits that I eat. Unfortunately, fructose seriously is blocking people's keto adaptation. Even when they're doing berries or raspberries, it's not working. You literally in the first phase of doing keto, and I gotta remember to hydrate, have to literally put to the side your berries and your green apples and your pears, which are the lower glycemic fruits, until you literally become more metabolically damaged. Now over time, your carbohydrate count can rise because your body becomes more adept to uh, and primed and conditioned to be able to use ketones without having your blood sugar go through these big swings, which then blocks your keto adaptation. So, uh, in my body, I could literally go and have foods with just a little bit more carbohydrate and I'm still super ketotic. That's what happens when you do it for the long term. Um, now with that said, uh, yes, I buy honey child, just Jackie wait. She's like, do you buy chicken with a skin? I, uh, um, thighs with the skin on it. It is so hard to find thighs with skin because people are so afraid of fat and the skin on chicken. It's just so frustrating. But with that said, uh, thank you, Mecca916. Now, I live in LA. We've got Sprouts, we've got Air One, we've got Henry's, we've got Traders, we've got Whole Foods. I'm good. You, a lot of you guys who are not here don't have all of these lovely health markets. Um, there's also uswellnessmeats.com and they can ship it to you in 24 hours. They shrink wrap and freeze it if you guys have a hard time to get some of these fatty meats that are from healthy animals, pasture, non-GMO, corn-fed, non-hormonal injected animals. But with that said, your carbohydrates are simple but kind of complicated. So. I talked about the fruits. I don't do sweet fruits. You can see that the fruits are going to have very low carbohydrate or something like uh, an avocado has a higher, like it has about 13 grams of carbs, but there's so much fiber, the seven to 10 grams of fiber in an avocado plus all that fat. There is 28 grams of fat on a Haas avocado that the fat and fiber slows down the rate at which the carbohydrate hits the blood. So it doesn't spike your blood sugar. So pound away the avocado as long as you don't have a latex allergy. So I've explained this latex allergy many times. Now, um, cruciferous vegetables, they're great, you know? But a lot of you guys have 
histamine intolerance. That darn histamine intolerance. And the more people I coach, yes, bok choy. The more people, yeah, you have to cook them. Jackie's like, I have to cook them. The more people that I coach, the more I'm like, yo, how many of you out there have seasonal, seasonal allergies, food sensitivities, bloat, gas, loose stool, food in your stool, constipation, IBS where you're pooping over three times a day. Like, it's a lot of you guys. Candida, fungal infections, rash, bad skin, crashing. Like, there are so many of you that have skin issues that have leaky gut. And it really makes it hard to adapt, especially with the vegetables. It sucks because you wouldn't need the prebiotic fiber from the cruciferous family if your gut was balanced, yeah? We wouldn't need that because fat is going to make your stool slide right through you. But the problem is a lot of you guys have leaky gut. And the more people I coach and the more questions I ask, there's always a problem with digestion. Either low stomach acid or heartburn or bloatedness or... I mean, there's a million problems with your stool or with no kimchi, no kimchi. Now, yes, bacteria infections are the worst enemy. And most of you, Latoya, and most of you have it. So the cruciferous family has oxalates, salicylates, goitrogens, phytate. Uh, they're coming from nightshade family, lectins, because these these bitter plants and leaves really have built up a hardcore defense. So have legumes and beans and nuts and all those foods from those family families, uh, plant source foods really, really build up strong plant chemicals that do us in. And of course, wheat, you know, wheat, the protein, the gluten in wheat just demolishes your gut flora and microvilli, but you may not even notice for years until it's too late. So people are like, oh, I'm fine with all these foods. And I'm like, no, you're not fine. You think you're fine, but you're not fine. So, um, leaky butt, <laughs> leaky butt. So Jackie wrote, somebody wrote that. So, uh, we got 113 people in the chat and only 89 likes. So can you guys like up this stream? And I kind of think that for those who haven't liked this stream, they haven't seen me enough and they're trying to debate, am I going to listen to this chick or not? All right. Yes. Get the likes up. Thank you, Jackie. Jackie's like, I liked it up. All right. Um, I'll talk about skin on pork belly and all that, which is like the skin on animals is, is fantastic. And I will talk about flax seeds and all this kind of stuff in a minute. Let me just finish the plant source foods. So... The cruciferous family is the best because it has very low in carbohydrate. We've got the greens, the, all the green family, the kale and the spinach and the mustard greens and collard greens and bok choy and, and, you know, the arugulas and the lettuces and all this kind of stuff. And then you've got broccoli, cauliflower, kale, kale asparagus, cabbage. Now, green beans are not of the cruciferous family, but they are, um, they are keto approved. And so the problem is... I'll talk about paleo or not paleo in a minute. The problem is that, uh, uh, by the way, for the replay people, somebody just asked paleo or not paleo, so I'm commenting on that. Snow peas have too much sugar. But let me go more into it. If I didn't list it, right, then it's not there. If I, if I say snow peas, then snow peas. No snow peas. And trust me, I know exactly the food y'all can eat and cannot eat. So no carrots, no potato, no snow peas. No bulb onions, no red, no white bulb onions. Like if I'm not mentioning it as a part of what you can eat. Now things like the paprika, which is a fruit, the, the bell peppers, uh, the green is obviously going to have low, lower carbohydrate count. Raw or, or barely cooked is going to be better than cooked because you cook down the fiber, you raise the carbohydrate count, and that can block your keto adaptation. Now, for those who have done keto for a while, you can start to incorporate things like zucchini, so fruit, things with seeds. Uh, a little bit of um, uh, cucumber, which is a fruit, and 
a little bit of tomato if you don't have a thyroid problem because the, the skin can block your eye, the iodine. So can cruciferous. Cruciferous family can also mess, especially uh, kale. Kale is, kale is really toxic. You know, it's very goitrogenic. But, you know, we got to choose the better out of the worst because these cruciferous families can also help to, to uh, the filtration and, and bring lessen and the fatty deposits in your liver and estrogen really that creates the fatty deposits or the non-alcoholic liver disease so but with that said um you know you just a lot of you guys have food sensitivities and are completely unaware of it that's the problem and you have to celery is, is good yes that's the one i didn't mention celery is good but i don't want you guys to eat celery as a snack i want it to be with your uh, main meals. I want snacks to be high in fat and celery is not high in fat. So people try to eat a lot of celery. I'm like, no, no, no. All right. So, um, I hope you guys see that here are the carbohydrates. You have to be very careful of the cruciferous family. A lot of you guys get gut distress. You don't do well on the, these raw cruciferous because of all the plant chemicals. I suggest to cook for people who've got histamine intolerance, which they uh, develop too much histamine from the mast cells and that creates inflammation in the body to try to protect it and a lot of you guys have that problem so if you're wondering why every time you do a salad you feel so bad it's because you cannot digest some of these raw plants with these plant anti-nutrients or plant chemicals so I'm always like cook in the beginning just to be on the safe side in the first month it's better to cook your cruciferous vegetables because of course we can't do blueberries in the very beginning and we have to even be careful for things like zucchini um, which is considered a fruit. Um, uh, okay, so those are your plant source. Um, your cruciferous family would be ketotic and spinach for the potassium and avocado for the potassium. But we have to make sure that uh, you don't have a gut, gut distress from the cruciferous family. Okay, so with that said, the timing of it, and then I'm going to take your questions and then I'm bouncing out of here so fast. So the timing of your food is super important. And the amounts, of course, the amounts, clearly. I mean, you can't have the protein high, you can't keep have the, uh, the fat low. And I, it's, it's very rare. Now, more people who catch my videos are getting their fats over 200 and they're like, oh, Steph, I feel it was feeling better. My keto flu was lasting too long. But then I saw your video and I upped my fat over 200 and I went down on my protein and I instantly start feeling better. Um, for those who haven't seen me, you gotta get your fats over 200 and it's literally like 200 to 350, depending on how big you are. Now, if you're a big athletic guy, you want those fats to go even over 300, even possibly to 400. Um, oh, the love of your life, thank you. Um, so, uh, I'm not really seeing the comments at this moment, just uh, catch a couple. So, and I need to drink some water. Yes. Let's say, okay, so Suzanne says, what if your body can't tolerate veggies? This is real. A lot of you people have no problem digesting the vegetables. You don't even know that some people, that's the reason, the reason why a lot of people like the carnivore diet. Because every time they eat vegetables, they have so much gut distress. And then when they do the carnivore diet, they're like, oh my God, I feel amazing. It's fabulous. It's wonderful. But you need, unfortunately, because you guys have a, an imbalance of, of gut flora. I mean, we can't do high fruits with a lot of the carotenoids and the flavonoids in it because we're trying to adapt. So you can't do like oranges, you know, because you can get a lot of the antioxidants. You know, you can get the antioxidants from like radish and a little bit of yellow squash and like red bell pepper, but you can't do that in the beginning on keto because the carb count will just block your keto adaptation. This comes in time where you could do more colorful uh, vegetables that are lower in, or fruits, fruit, fruit, veggie fruits, <laughs> like the squash family. Um, you can incorporate some of these uh, foods that are high in antioxidants when you start to get your blood sugar more stable. Now, um, if like the girl woman was asking, like, I can't do vegetables, pressure cooker is great. You really break down the, um, the 
the anti-nutrients when you blast it. Unfortunately, you kind of kill the fiber, which is great for uh, probiotic foods to grow on, but um, to just get some of your minerals and some of the vitamins uh, in your, and some of the calcium and some of the vitamin C that you can get in greens, you're gonna have to just cook it. That's what you gotta do. Now, cauliflower is fine because you have to, you know, somebody's talking about, oh, the, the carbs. You guys, there's fiber, a lot of fiber in cauliflower. So we can take the fiber and minus the total number of carbohydrate, and then that's called your net carbohydrate. And then that is going to be the net carbs, fiber minus the total number is going to be the actual amount of carbohydrates that you consume. So it doesn't matter that cauliflower has like probably four carbs per one cup, probably. Um, okay, so um, I will talk about the hypothyroidism when I'm done with the timing of your food. Yes. So, okay, the timing of your food comes down to what type of demographic are you? Are you, and the foods too, are you breastfeeding your child? Are you pregnant? Are you an athlete? Are you power lifter, weight lifter? Are you Olympic lifter? Are you a marathoner? Are you an endurance athlete? Are you crossfitter? Are you gymnast? Are you skateboarder, which I used to be a pro skateboarder on big vert ramps. Are you overweight? Do you have like sleep apnea? <laughs> is your body, do you have high blood pressure? Do you have two jobs? Are you a night shift worker, third shift night worker? Um, do you have a job where you're like a hairdresser or a doctor on call, emergency room doctor, and you can't eat in between? Do you have a job really, really early in the morning? See, because I'm going to break down nobody else talks about things people don't talk about on the internet. Why are people not talking about this? All of this matters. People just like, eat a lot of nuts and eat a lot of cheese and drink a lot of coffee with butter in it and do the carnivore diet and nothing else matters? Like, are we living in the stone age? <laughs> Come on. I just listed tons of things. Do you have Addison's disease? Is your cortisol so low? Do you have hypothyroidism? Are, are you type one, type two, right? These, thing mat these things matter with the type of uh, food that you eat and the timing. Do you have histamine intolerance like that one woman who's like, I can't even do vegetables, right? It matters, everything. So if you're a carb person, for example, post-workout, you want to glyco glycogen refuel. Now, glycogen is stored energy in the muscle. Like your muscle's like a gas tank. Uh, you also want to protein do a uh, cons uh, consu consumption of protein post-workout because you've also become more catabolic than a keto person. So you want to do carbs and then you want to do protein and then you want the insulin to drive the friggin' amino acids into the muscle cell. So people who are carb eaters, that's what you got to do post-workout. Keto pedo people, not so much. We don't have to be so consumed with branched chain amino acids right? We don't have to be co so consumed with doing protein within 20 minutes. We don't have to be so consumed with, uh, uh, well, we don't have to be consumed with glycogen restorage whatsoever. So that's the reason why I've been doing this dang thing for 10 years, doing an experiment of no refeeding just to see what my body, what happens to my body over time, strict keto. So you guys know I lift. If you check out videos, I don't. I post more videos like this rather than I do lift. But y'all know I lift. You know that I lift, and um, and I mean I lift. Like I'm a tomboy, so I don't do dainty workouts and I don't do deadlifts all day trying to increase my butt size. Like that's what I see with the girls in the gym. They a lot of just average chick. They don't train upper body. So you got the little bird upper body and then they're just obsessed. Deadlift. This is all I see. Dead. Oh, I see so many deadlifts. It literally gives me a headache at the gym. I'm like, lift! Use your whole body. It's symbiotic. All right. So keto people do not have to do a pre-post protein 
load or there's no carbohydrate. What I like to do pre-workout is do a butter because butter has partial MCTs in it. Now you can also do a coconut oil or an MCT oil pre-workout because those MCTs can hit the bloodstream within 20 minutes and it's a nice little bump without having to do any caffeine. It's really, really cool to do a little fat load pre-workout. Um, Post-workout, it depends on how hardcore your workout was. You know, you don't want to be too catabolic post-workout, especially if you're in that adaptation phase. But uh, the need for uh, protein is much lower because you're not breaking down, you're not as gluconeogenic post-workout or during your workout as you would be on carbohydrates. So a lot of people go to the gym, their glycogen's depleted, and as soon as the brain senses that glycogen is low, the body will start going into gluconeogenesis and start using amino acids to feed the brain so you don't go into a coma while you're working out. Just saying. Wow, we got 22 likes and 21 people in the chat. Thanks, guys. When the likes get higher than the amount of people, it's like it tells a lot. So thank you. Uh, so the timing of your food. Now, that's around the workout. Let's talk about your main meals, right? You're going to get up. This is optimal. This is, this is optimal, but this may not fit your schedule, and I understand that. So hold on one second. Now, um... I should talk about the type of workout next live broadcast, I think. I'm going to do that. Um, I never drink water in these streams, and I have to remember to drink water. And water is so important. You guys are, like, a lot of you guys are drinking, like, either too much water or you're, you're doing two liters, of, two liters of water, but towards the end of the day, so the middle of the day you're not drinking. Thinking. That's not how the body hydrates itself. So that's a whole nother subject. So do not complain that I'm jumping around because that's what I do. I jump around. And if you go back videos seven years ago, I said I digress then and I digress now. With that said, um, we are talking about the timing of your, let's say, breakfast. So if you have an eight to five job or if you work from home uh, or if you're going to school, and you get up, let's say, between 5 and 6.30, and uh, you don't have to rush off to a job, eat a breakfast. Eat a breakfast. But you want to at least give yourself... Now, if you are going to eat a breakfast and then go work out an hour later, you're going to have to make that a small breakfast because you don't want to overload the body with digestion and working out at the same time. So some people will go eat a big full breakfast and then go to the gym 30 minutes later and the body's like, okay, do I do work on digestion or do I work, do work on the, the muscles? So it creates an inflammatory reaction to try to do both at once. The body's like, I, I can only choose one or the other. I can't do both. So they'll both be compromised. So at least give yourself an hour. Optimally, three, four, five hours post breakfast is perfect. But I get it, a lot of you guys don't have that schedule. Now I see keep, people keep writing the same thing. I'm not looking at the comments right now. I am literally just, excuse me, and I'm burping because I'm drinking too fast and talking too much. Excuse me. So uh, optimally, it would be great, right, in a perfect world that you can get up before the sun rises, have breakfast within 30 minutes, um, get your fats, your proteins, and the carbohydrates, which I just explained. I like people to start their day off doing a potassium load. So if you can add avocado or spinach into your breakfast or rotate them, uh, I like to get at least 45 grams in weight, uh, at least 60 to 70 grams of total fat for just breakfast. And I did not stutter. 60 to 70 grams of total protein, not in weight. So that takes you from between four three, four, five, six tablespoons of fat for breakfast on the plate because I no longer count what you put in the pan because people are like putting a tablespoon of butter in the pan and they're like, why am I ketones so low? And I'm like, because the pan is oxidizing the fat. A lot of it's sticking to the side. You're not even getting that full tablespoon in. So I just stop counting what's in the pan and just start counting what you put on the plate. I just see question marks and I'm not taking questions right now, so waste of time. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, uh, we want to get up and eat within 30 minutes. Now the reason for this madness, which is totally contradicting the intermittent fasting concept, it's because you guys are metabolically damaged. Yes, you have hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid problems times a million. How do I know? Because I coach a bunch of you guys who have those problems. You crash in the afternoon post meals. Your body's no longer in this homeostatic balance. The glucagon, the IGF-1, the gluconeogenesis, and the glucagon is not bringing up the blood sugar where it should, and you guys have too much insulin production, and you slam down there, and you're fracked up. That's what's going on. So when you're looking at all these keto videos, like nothing ever makes sense, they make it sound so easy. Same with all these dietary trends. It's not easy. It's hard in the context of having to change all the things that you've known from your past and introduce a new way of thinking, right? Because people are stubborn and they're addicted to habit. So keto definitely breaks old habits. So with that said, you're not hungry. You know why you don't wake up hungry? Because you have too much cortisol in your bloodstream in the middle of the night. Because you're not hitting enough REM cycles. What does cortisol do? Cortisol is coming from adrenaline. Adrenaline, norepinephrine, cortisol. So what happens when you have too much adrenaline in the bloodstream? It kills hunger because adrenaline is designed for what? To run from danger, run from a lion. And you're not gonna have a meal if you're running from a lion because the body doesn't know the difference. It just knows that there's a ton of adrenaline and cortisol in the blood and that kills hunger. That's why you're not waking up hungry. Now, some of you guys are eating late at night and then the food doesn't digest because your body's trying to hibernate at night. It's not trying to go to the job. It's not trying to clock in and go to the job and start digesting. Because digesting is a pain in the butt for the body to do. Trust. That's why people like to do this intermittent fasting thing. Because digestion is a lot of work. It can be inflammatory, especially if you guys eat too fast, eat the wrong foods, eat it out of the timing, and the quality of food. So people start fasting because they have so much inflammation. But the problem is the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis when you fast. It's a hot mess. Sorry. Is what it is. It'd be great if we just didn't eat, but people didn't eat before, and that's called dieting. So now we put a new label on it. All these people are intermittent fasting. Now their blood sugar is so unstable, right? Blood sugar, ketones, everything's unstable. In the first week, you're like, it's great. I feel amazing. Over time, your body goes into hypergluconeogenesis because you don't even sleep enough. And if you don't sleep enough and get enough deep REM cycles, the blood sugar rebounds. That's why you all wake up. That's why you're tired. That's why you're not hungry. That's why you have the early morning dawns effect of too high blood sugar in the morning and a physiological insulin resistance rebound effect and reactive hypoglycemia in the, in the afternoon. And how can I spit out these words without any message board? There's no message board. I'm just talking. Look, there ain't nothing. I'm just talking from experience. I don't got anything behind me giving me notes. Nothing. <laughs> I am in that rant today. Last time I was more like, chill. Yes. I was like, thank you, you guys. Today I'm in the hyper rant. I think it's because I could just get dumb DMs. Like, <clears throat> stop DMing me stupid crap. It really chaffs me, as you can see. You love the rants. Thank you. Okay, so you want to get up and eat because that is going to tell the hypo, the medulla, right? That's going to tell the middle of the brain, the midbrain. Hey, I know that I've got unstable blood sugar, but now we're going to eat something so you don't have to barf out a bunch of adrenaline as a reserve tank because your glycogen is depleted. You're not keto adapted. I'm sorry, nobody talks about keto adapting. Why don't they talk about what it's like to adapt? People keep throwing around these words, but they don't know what it means. It's like some mythological creature just floating in the air. I'm in ketosis. No, you're not. You're not in ketosis. No, you're not. Okay? So stop telling me that you are. On my Facebook, oh my goodness. People are like, I do the carnivore diet. This guy's like, oh, I've been doing it for two years. And I'm like, all right, boop, boop, boop. I go click on honest pictures. I go, you look like you have low testosterone. Okay, I'm just saying it how it is, and you look younger than me. So if the carnivore is so great, why are you puny looking? Where's your testosterone? You know what I'm saying? Why do you have 
fat here, estrogenic fat. So I just get chaffed when people really, I know, I know, Emily, oh, thanks guys, you're like, I just get really annoyed with stupidity, just dumb comments that are just large swipes of whatever, you know, people can say whatever they want. They've got nothing to show, nothing to present, but they love to argue with me. I'm like, if you argue with me on my Facebook, I am going to crush you and I'm going to smash you like this. So don't do it. You won't last. Okay. The tail is going to go like this and you're going to go, <laughs> yes, I'm an alpha female. And when I'm not doing these little things, I'm a beta. I'm a beta female. I'm really, really silly right now, guys, and I'm cracked up, so keyboard warriors. Um, but like a lot of my rants are just my silliness. Obviously, I am so much into humanity and humility and kindness from people. If people are kind, I am so kind. Um, but when you're 50 and you look 30 and people don't understand why you got an attitude, I was like, be born from 1967, okay? You're gonna have an attitude. Like my my poor little eyeballs, what they've seen every decade, because I've been like 30 for a couple of decades and people's perception of me. And so you just literally, and I'm, I'm digressing right now, I don't care what y'all think, okay? I'm gonna digress, because it gives me time to reflect on something else. But I've seen things change over the time and it really like, I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of change. I welcome everything. But the way that I see how we've evolved emotionally, right? So this connects to keto. Women are having, men are, their testosterone is too low. Women are estrogen dominant. People have depression, bipolarism, poor impulse control. They don't sleep, they're cranky, they're moody, they're upset. Men have low testosterone, and I already mentioned that, but in that sense that that makes a man depressed when their T levels are too low, but how many men are checking their free and total testosterone? Almost none. So you have to start looking at things like, you know, I need to do this keto, I need to time my meals out, I gotta make sure that my adrenals don't over response. That's why you time it out. You gotta make sure that you're getting enough fat throughout the day so you can start creating ketones via the diet, which is very, very important. The first, per which Preston says, you first want to create these viable ketones by what you eat, right? So this conversion into acetyl-CoA from the liver into acetoacetate in the blood with beta-hydroxybutyrate or uh, ketone bodies can now get into the bloodstream and also into the Krebs cycle, which is the energy to create ATP in the cells this is what we want. But to have this domino effect, this, this reaction of becoming ketotic, you've got to do a lot of things the correct way or it just doesn't work. And if it's not working and you don't have enough stored glycogen because you haven't eaten any starches or sugars and your ketones are not either viable or too low or too high, you're just going to damage your thyroid, damage your sex hormones. And I mentioned this, I think, in the last live broadcast. So timing out those foods, especially if you're hypoglycemic, you want to eat like six times. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it would be breakfast, lunch, dinner. So breakfast, 30 minutes after wake up, lunch between 12 and 1. Uh, dinner would be before 6 o'clock or by 6 o'clock. And then you would have a mid-morning snack and an afternoon snack of fat, like a fatty tea. Or you could do a bone broth that's no meat in it, loaded in fat as to stabilize the blood sugar so you don't have a blood sugar crash, right? You don't have this postprandial uh, uh, crash or reactive hypoglycemic reaction in the afternoon, which a lot of you guys have, which is when you guys start pounding down that afternoon coffee as to just get through the day. Or you get up and you have to have a coffee just to get you going, right? Because your hormones are out of whack, your blood sugar is out of whack, your cortisol is too high. And I know I'm saying a lot of stuff, but if you look at my videos, it's all the same stuff. It's all the same stuff and it's just sometimes you just kind of got to reiterate the same concepts or fatty teas you can do fatty teas you cannot just have fatty tea for breakfast you have to eat something chewing helps to, helps to pacify the adrenals and the hypothalamus pituitary so you can't just drink your food you must eat it unless you're going to a gym 
you get up early, you got to go to, uh, to, to your job early, you're going to do a fatty tea and like an egg yolk, right? Just something to put in the stomach to tell the brain that you're not fasting and then fasting, that a little bit is going in, not too much to, to distress the gut, but enough to not make the adrenals overreact when you go, thank you, Anna, uh, when you go uh, work out. Because we don't want you to crash. We don't want you to uh, become super hungry at night. So that's the reason why you eat in the morning. That's why people have said in the morning, eat like a king for breakfast, because it's going to pacify the adrenal glands. There's science behind this, guys. We're not pulling it out of the, you know, the, the back end pipes. No intermittent fasting. That's right, because you guys have adrenal insufficiencies. Now, I've said this a million times. It's old, right? I'm, it's old. It's got cobwebs on it. If you are, if your adrenals and your thyroid, if you have problems stabilizing your blood sugar, if you're insulin resistant, you do not want to intermittent fast more than a week out of your life. And if you do fast, you can't do anything. Because if you're moving around and doing stuff and exerting energy and you're not using enough ketones and your glycogen is depleted, and your electrolytes are low, you're gonna get sick. How do I know? Your hair is start, gonna start falling out. You'll check your testosterone, it's dropped. Yes, this is what happens. And nobody likes to talk about this because it won't sell a book. Telling people that your body's complex and you might have a lot of pre-existing issues like thyroid or testosterone, or estrogen dominance, or allergies, or sleep deprivation, or sleep apnea, or constipation, or thyroid or polycystic ovarian syndrome, and people don't like, or insulin resistance, people don't want to talk about this stuff because it doesn't, it doesn't they, they think that it won't sell a book. They think they won't sell their elixirs and potions and stuff if they tell you the hard, scary truth. But I don't believe in that. I think that knowledge is power. So no, it, you cannot intermittent fast, period. Because 99% of everyone that I talk to has adrenal problems. They have sleep problems. They have inflammation. Their gut biome's all screwed up. The water that you drink that has fluoride messes with your gut flora. The, the, the glyphosate on not, if you're eating at restaurants, you're just constantly being exposed to non-organic foods, non-pastured foods, and your gut's torn up. So you have a gut dysbiosis and you think that you're gonna intermittent fast. Where are you gonna get your electrolytes? The air? Nope, there's no electrolytes in air. <laughs> if you do intermittent fast, you should literally do nothing. Like intermittent fast on the weekend and just like chill. It'd be in a rocking chair the whole day. <laughs> Don't look at your phone. Don't troll on the internet. Don't look at bills, right? Just do nothing and keep the stress hormones down. Then you can fast. Yeah, this is live. Jay, this is live, live, all the way live. <laughs> so that's what people don't talk about. You always have to contextualize everything. If you do keto, if you do the HCG, if you do, um, I only, I never have my phone on. I never have it on. I only have it on right now because I'm waiting for my Amazon package to come. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> I don't even have the sound on. <laughs> I don't have it on vibrate because I don't want to look at it. So I'll get missed calls or I'll get missed texts and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> and you know, I get a lot of uh, uh, notifications uh, on my social media that I don't, you know, talk about or look at. Okay. So you have to address inflammation. Now, a lot of women have IBS, their constipation, the thyroid, the Hashis, the hypo. Guys, you tend to have, um, a lot of you guys have high cortisol or you can't sleep well, or um, some of you guys are starting to develop, like, you know, when they get in their 40s, it's like they have to pee all the time because the prostate's pushing on the, on the, uh, on the, the bladder. A lot of you women are having UTIs. People are having kidney pain on keto because they have a pre-existing urinary tract infection and they don't hydrate that much because you dump a lot of water on keto and boom, their kidneys start hurting and then people are doing too much chicken breast. So you have this compact reaction that creates kidney pain. So uh, the timing of the foods that is very important 
like I said, we don't want to eat heavy foods late at night, uh, i.e. protein, because it's a lot of, you need stomach acid, you need the peptides and enzymes to be able to break it down, so the body doesn't really digest. It's trying to hibernate, which is why if you guys, yeah, I see you had p kidney pain two days ago, June just said, do I not know my stuff or, or not? People are like, what education do you have? I'm like, how can I even mention all these words? <laughs> I flip my phone around. There's no whiteboard. I know this stuff because I talked to so many of you guys. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Like right now, people are like, don't read the comments. I like to read the comments sometimes. That's what, that's what I like. Makes me feel good. So, um, <laughs> thank you. What is it? Tosca? Donna? Thank you. So, uh, the timing of your foods are, are important as to not develop hypoglycemia. And some of you guys may have symptoms of it. Like if you're a big coffee drinker and then you try to do keto and you try to intermittent fast, like it's a mess. Like it's a mess. People just don't tell the truth. They like to go, so I did intermittent fasting and I'm just so lean and so great and oh my god like they do all this stuff and it really confuses you guys but when I talk to them see stuff knows the right questions to ask <laughs> I will I will have a consultation and I know exactly and I know how to trick people with questions too because if I ask obvious questions they're gonna lie to me right they're gonna lie like especially with sleep because if your sleep is dysregulated and you're not hitting deep REM and deep sleep your body doesn't do well in the day. It just doesn't. And if you're fasting, you're, you're, it's a mess. You're super gluconeogenic. So when I know what questions to ask, it literally helps with people to start listening with a more, with a different ear. So the timing of your food is important. Now, if you guys work at night, you might want to bring like a bone broth and thermos and load it with six tablespoons of fat, like four butter or an animal fat two or three of, um, of an MCT and sip on that at night. Yes, so sip on that at night if you're a night shift worker. Now, if you're doing a, if you're third shift and you're working from like 11 to six in the morning, you're gonna have to eat something small. I prefer, prefer sorry, protein that's not steak or like anything that's uh, dense meat because uh, you get hiccups when you intermittent fast, that's funny. Um, because it's really hard on digestion to eat in the middle of the night. So things like ground meat is better than steak or, you know, like like lamb or anything that's dense, anything that's ground up that's easier on the stomach to digest. No shakes, no smoothies, unless you are a doctor or you have a job or you cannot literally go fork in the mouth. It's the only time that I put together sort of like a keto step approved smoothie for you guys to drink if you're a night shift worker, if you're a day shift worker and you can't stop to eat something. All right, I've covered all the bases on food timing. That's the reason why I put up this timer was to let you guys know about types of food and timing. So when people keep asking me, how do you start keto? What do you do? I just banged it out in a video and I'm gonna sit down for a minute because my knee's killing me. Um, now I'm going to take your guys' questions. I can get closer to my phone and take a look and see what's going on. Okay, so Larry's, Larry is 44 years old. He's been doing keto for five months and you feel amazing. Oh, that's Hannah. Oh, her name is, I don't, what? Okay, Hannah's doing well. Okay, doing keto will make you feel crazy energy. Yes, yes, we have statements here, no questions. Okay, Google something. Um, what is it? You just bought Herb Keto Logic Petri Poops? I don't know what that is. Boob Keto? I don't know what that is. Okay, I'm looking for references for your new book. Have them. Uh, no. No, because I'm not referencing anything. I am just, my book has a lot to do with what I've learned on my own. So I'm speaking from my own experience. I'm talking about the body, but like I'll talk about Candida. I'll talk about, um, let's say, uh, biofilms. 
So I'm not like referencing an article or a book on biofilms. I'm just reading a lot of material on biofilms. And then I'm incorporating what I've noticed with people with fungal overgrowths and how difficult it is and why people start developing rashes on keto, which is a die off. So I just learn in general, like if somebody's got an ailment or like hemochromatosis, they can't get rid of the iron, I'll go look it up and I'll see if keto works with somebody who's got Parkinson's or hemochromatosis or fibroids or endometriosis, but I'm not referencing a book. And I kind of did that on purpose because then it would be just a lot of references of something else and I want to speak more of my own experience. Sarah says, smash the likes if you haven't done it already. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so what is Steph, what's, what is a Steph approved smoothie? Um, I don't want to talk about because then you guys are going to start making smoothies. So, no, Freddie, I'll do that in a one-on-one -on -one consult consultation if you, if you care to know. Just, or the book. Uh, does keto stop neuropathy? It, I don't want, Latanya, I think it, that mean, it, it can either stop it or it can uh, minimize it. But... With neuropathy, you also have to think about your cortisol levels, your sleep. So it's not just the diet. Psyllium husk is, uh, what is it? Brad? No, no, no. Psyllium husk is really, it scratches your intestine. No, don't use psyllium husk, guys. No. Like when I was making recipes, I really did my best to try to find the safest ingredients. But there's nothing that's safe because you guys have varying levels of issues. Uh, what, about, what about no thyroid? Oh, Carrie, it's no problem if you have no thyroid. It's no problem at all. You just literally have to become very parasympathetic in the evening and get deep REM sleep and get your macros on point and you're good to go without a thyroid. Does keto help with arthritis? Oh yeah. I mean, I've worked with people who've got rheumatoid arthritis, RA, and they're like, I haven't had an attack in a year on keto. It's amazing what keto can do when it's done the right way. Okay, if you're an athlete and have to do your sport at 6 p.m., yeah, that sucks. Um, I would do eight. Was it A D R N? I would still do your dinner at like five, and then I would take with me like something that can fat load, right? So I would do like a bone broth with just a little bit of protein actually still left, like meat off the bone still left in the broth, broth, and crank up the fat and put it in a thermos and have that post workout. Uh, do you think it's okay to eat two meals a day? No, because that would be fasting, Elisa. You need to, you're not going to get enough of your, I said, I'm sorry, I sound sarcastic. <laughs> you know you sound sarcastic when you answer the same questions 5,000 times and you have to learn patience. So I'm sorry about that. Yes, uh, you cannot eat two meals a day. You're not going to get your macronutrient profile, especially those who first start keto. It's not a good idea. And people tend to fast because they're having adrenaline problems, like I explained, the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis, and hypo, th uh, uh, hypoglycemia. If you ate, every time I see people doing that two meals a day and they do keto, they start developing hardcore hypoglycemia. And they're not getting enough electrolytes in because you're dumping water more than normal. And then you start having these weird low electrolyte symptoms. Don't mess with that stuff. Um, and people who do like, I've been doing like two meals a day for like 10 years, or I've been doing keto for a year on like two meals a day. And I'm like, I know, cause I can look at you. You got issues. I, I don't even have to ask. I can look at you. Okay. So I have an uncontrollable thyroid. Larry, or is it Hannah? What, what's your name? Larry's must be your screen name. No, you can balance everything, but you have to get your stress down. If you can't get your stress down, then your thyroid hormone will be all over the place. Just do quite a bit of research before jumping straight in. Well, Digital Master, I'm not gonna lie, the research that you get out there is garbage. I wouldn't do like keto research, I would do thyroid research. I would do sleep, circadian rhythm, gallstones, kidney stone, liver stone research, the keto research, or you can research me, of course, I'm going to be so inclined to believe that what I know is the best. Of course, that's what I believe. Now, you guys could think that I'm tripping, but, you know, at least I stand for what I believe. Um, let me see, I always hit a wall when losing weight. It's because your blood sugar is unstable. Uh, so, essentially, I keep telling you this, Larry, but I think your name is Hannah or something like that, or Sophia. You need to get a glucometer and test your blood sugar if you're... Insulin, you guys should also get an insulin test if you can go do that through your doctor. 
If your insulin is high, you're not going to lose weight on keto. If your blood sugar is high, you're not going to lose weight on keto. You're not. And that's the thing no one talks about. You actually have to adapt. You can't just do this stupid diet with cheese and nuts and drink coffee and eat twice a day and eat a bunch of meat and be like, why aren't I losing any weight? Like, I don't understand. Like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, what? Sculpting what? A scapular winging. No, I don't, Chris. That's strange. No. That's a weird way to phrase it. You mean your latissimus dorsi? Back exercises? There's four, five, six back exercises that you can do. Like two things, back rows and pull-ups. Best ever for the rhomboid area. If you take multivitamin, do you still include my I don't like multivitamins because you know, these are man manipulated things in concentration. Nobody gets this. When you take supplements, the liver's like, <laughs> like that's not normal. We're used to going grabbing something and from mother nature and putting it in our mouth. Once it goes to a lab, it could be in doses that could be making you have an inflammatory reaction. That's why I don't like multivitamins. Take only what you need. What you don't need, you might have too much of E in your diet. You know, that could be problematic or K2 or whatnot. If you got like clotting disorders and whatnot, or prostaglandin issues, I need keto snacks for the plane. What do you recommend? Uh, flax crackers, pretty good. I get some Applegate sandwich uh, cold cuts and munch on that. Some people can do macadamia nuts. A lot of you can't. Those would be snacks. So I make uh, keto uh, pancakes, stuffed keto pancakes. And then I'll do like bacon, Applegate roast beef, a ton of butter, and I am so, or I'll do homemade mayo, don't even get me started. Or I'll do like paprika flax chips, right? Salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, and you just crunch, crunch on the flight. Because you all know that I travel. Although I haven't traveled in like, ooh, it's been a while. I'm going to book a flight soon. I'm, I feel like I'm in writer's prison. I haven't traveled anywhere because I've been writing this book. Okay. Uh, I guess that's when I'm digressing, right? People want me to stop doing that and be a machine and just answer the questions. Uh, what stuff stuffed keto pancakes? Uh, that's a weird way to phrase it, Natalie. Just don't trust supplements. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Like you, I used to take, like, I would have like a cabinet of a hundred supplements. I finally was like, I'm going to throw this stuff away. I was like, throw away, throw away. Why did I get this one? Why did it get... That was back when I didn't know. Supplements, some supplements are great for the short term. Like ox bile. If you guys have got gallbladder stone, stones or no gallbladder or betaine HCL or some type of low-level probiotic that's not dairy. Feel tight. I drink two liters way before 6 p.m. and retaining water. Oh, Kimberly, it's not the re re retaining water problem is probably because of too high levels of cortisol and you're having problem with your uh, lymphatic system and draining, you know, and I don't know. I don't know when you're, I don't know, like, I don't know if you're not sleep. I don't know nothing about you to make an opinion. Okay, let's see here. Deltoids are well defined. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I always feel like I get a VIP for like being a little bit like braggadocious because I'm 50 with 10 knee surgeries on my left knee and I cannot run out of a burning building if it were on fire. So I always feel like this has taken for me to be in the health level of health that I am. It's a lot of work and I don't mind it. It's a lot of work. Can chicken be fried? Yes. Anything can be fried, but on lower temps. Excess burping after, oh, because your uh, stomach acids are too low. That's what makes you burp. And you've got re evolution for 100, 4100. Uh, you are having a hard time di digesting, definitely, if you're burping. Okay. Uh, uh, Janae, this autophagy, you need to put it in context. Otherwise, I can't give an opinion. You see, if we travel to Mexico... And the meat is not grass-fed. Uh, when I travel, my meats aren't grass-fed. I don't care. As long as my kidneys and my liver and my 
colon are working, I'll detox out all of that corn fed, soybean, canola oil, glyphosate. <laughs> Excess gas, Natalie, means that you're having a hard time digesting your food. You might have leaky gut. You might have candida overgrowth. Uh, apple cider vinegar, good to drink. Uh, for those who can tolerate it, sure, because some people have a histamine reaction to it, some don't. Celium husk is no. Marcella, ah, it's a big no. Are buffalo wings with blue cheese? No. Blue cheese dressing? No. No cheese. It's got casein, and that's real processed garbage. Uh, okay, is it better to fry or bake? Um probably bake but not all of us have time to bake so frying on the uh, uh on low temperature uh, and sometimes i fry stuff because i'm trying to cook it a certain way as well that i don't get from baking so i fry my lamb chops and steak i don't bake it okay it used to be whey protein nut oh isn't that garbage jay that stuff is <laughs> so nasty it's so nasty and I smell the stinking men and now women I'm like oh you smell so bad because of these protein shakes stop <laughs> flax seeds are always the big debatable subject um, I have not noticed any issues with flax and the, the phytoestrogens some say it can lower your estrogen. It's a, it's a still quite a debatable subject, so you just have to do your own choice on that. I can only stand for what I know absolutely, and then I don't know. If I don't know, and then I'm willing to learn if the information's out there. Yeah, but no, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that IF claims to have benefits on auto, auto fat, autophagy, but the problem is is if you have adrenal issues. So you, it's like it's like kale. Kale has uh, properties in it that will help to, to lessen the amount of estrogen in the liver. But then it's got phytates in it that can block iodine into the thyroid. So if we're going to do with autophagy, I mean, you really just want to get your cortisol down and your sleep down so your body can, you can clean up the cells, right? You want to get the stress down. You want to be able to use ketones. And so people are saying intermittent fasting because they're not trying to even keto adapt for autophagy, if I'm saying it right. No dairy except for butter as long as you can handle, and grass fed as long as you can handle the small amounts of whey and casein. Let's see, can fatty tea and egg be breakfast before 5 p.m.? 5 a.m. Yeah, I would do yolks. Like I would do two yolks and um, a fatty tea, and then I would actually have a proper breakfast with a little bit more macros to start the day later uh, thought on ranch and blue cheese was okay that's Brianna because that's because you're checking out I mean does it seem okay does that seem okay like blue cheese dressing is a is a um, a processed garbage milk from sick cows like just from the sick cow right corn fed hormone injected cows that have infections and that's the blue tree cheese. I'm not even talking about A1 cows. I'm not even talking about the levels of uh, casein that destroy the gut wall. I'm just saying blue cheese, you know, from a store that is not from grass-fed cows. So no, just that's no, a, a no. Yes, switch charge you can put on rotation. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Was it has haspara? Haspara. That sounds so Swedish. Haspara support. Thank you. Uh, you love watching the YouTube. Thank you. That's awesome. The YouTube support. Thank you. I try not to swear. I use other terms. Sometimes it slips out. Okay, let's see here. Uh, full fat plain yogurt. No, because that has casein. That's just what I just said. No. Nope, 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 nope. Not grass fed. Some of it is. Nope. That's a no. <laughs> Haspara, bada. Oh, I want to say it's Swedish because that sounds so Swedish. Haspara. Uh, thank you. Um, why do I have high fasting blood sugar, 100 to 112 in the morning? It's called the early morning Don's effect. It's because your blood sugar has probably been unstable most of your life. Like, I don't know what your life is. I don't know if you're having deep REM sleep. I don't know any of that stuff. 
So it's it's like what is it my Linda Ku? I would need to. I mean, uh, a consultation is not a bad idea because if I could talk to you, I could peg it in a second why you're having the early morning dawns effect in the morning, and you're not adapting with those numbers. It's just never going to happen. Okay, egg whites are really really bad for you. Yes, they poke holes in the gut wall. Yeah, they're, they're it's because the whites are meant to protect the fetus. People don't know this. Now you can still eat a whole eggs, but if you've got, you know, check to see if you've got egg sensitivity. Super super important. GMO seasoning, cool? No, not cool. <laughs> Try to get organic, non-pesticide seasoning. Even that matters. Yes, if you have no problem with lemon, because it's a, it's a high histamine food, if you have histamine intolerance, be very careful with lemon. But the pectins, right, and apple cider vinegar and lemons help to dejunkify the liver. So it's really, really great if you guys have fatty liver to do lemon water as long as you don't have histamine intolerance. Dang, I didn't know that about the egg whites. You didn't? Haven't you ever heard of anybody having like uh, egg allergies? It's from the white primarily. It's the protein. So the people are, like I live in LA and people are doing all these fitness competitions pounding down the egg whites and they look horrible. Like the other day, there was these guys and they were flexing without shirts on in a mirror. And I was like, the dude to the left looks like he's going to die. Like. His skin looked purple. I mean, it wasn't even pink anymore. Like, you weren't even fleshy anymore. You're purple, bruh. You look purple. Like, you're going to die. <laughs> it's so important, you guys, to look at the tongue, the teeth, the whites of your eye, the ridges on your nails, your skin quality, <laughs> your gut, if you're constantly bloated, these are things that no one talks about. So when I talk to people, I'm like, mm-hmm. He got little blotchy stuff on his, like when his head is like, as soon as I look at somebody's big pores or broken blood vessels around their nose. By the way, somebody's asking me about, they're like, oh, I see you've got liver spots or something on your face. A lot of you guys don't know, these are freckles. See, freckles. <laughs> freckles, not liver problems. <laughs> And let me see, uh, you're going hard. Seriously, they're purple. I'm like, what's up with the people who take like exogenous stuff when their skin, their liver is like, <laughs> and the skin is purple. Like, is that not a clue that you were gonna die an early death? I'm just saying. Um, oh, you have to catch the replay, right on. Uh, what causes hiccups? Uh, uh, typically, I mean, lots of things can cause hiccups. Uh, actually, I don't know, Tiffany, why you're getting hiccups when you, um, when you intermittent fast, but I wouldn't do it. You know, if something's making you have a, a bad reaction, and even keto can do that, you know, if you do it the wrong way, it can have a bad reaction. Okay, let's see here. What time is it? It's, okay, an hour and 17 minutes, almost an hour and 18. Grimace, McDonald's, GMO, chapter, yeah, 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 he's purple. But... People are purple for a lot of reasons. But I also see broken blood vessels. You know, cream cheese is poisonous, Sasha. I keep telling you guys, I don't eat egg whites. No, I, I don't ever eat whites by themselves unless I'm doing one of these recipes, which I'll do like three times a year. Like I'll do cauliflower hash browns and then use egg whites as a bonding agent, but I don't eat it on the daily. Yes, my calendar will open for consultations this Sunday. So people who are looking to do a consultation with stuff, I promise I will be really nice. I'll be very sweet and I'll be very caring and I will be very nice in the consultation because it's just one-on-one, -on -one, right? I'll be very empathetic, but on the live stream, um, I'm cray cray. Keto is great for dogs, FYI. Uh, single person who has done, blah, 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 let me see what's this question. So then every single person who has done keto is wrong, but they lost weight and feel great. Yeah, they're wrong, Brianna, they're lying. They're lying. Did you not hear me, hun? Did you not hear me say, let me look at your skin up close, right? Feeling great is subjective. Feeling great? Vegans who stop eating meat feel great because they were eating out of, you know, what is it, uh, Panda Express before in a McDonald's. 
Feeling great is subjective. Let me talk to you. Because people can't get, they cannot get past the lies with me. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that, uh, uh, Brianna, chill. She's like, so every single person who does keto does it wrong? Most of them. Listen to the wording, not all. Most. Well, and losing weight? Are they using a DEXA scan? Wait, you could lose muscle. If you lose muscle, you are messed up. Brianna, child. Mm-mm. I know you, mm-mm. Okay, say so, uh, like that until like it is, no fluff. Yeah, like Brianna trying to challenge me. Come on now. Like, I'm not stupid. So then every single person who's done keto is wrong? Come on, girl. You know better. You know better. You know I'm smart. I mean, what I'm saying is, you know that, like, I'm picking up on the question. Look, most people do keto the wrong way, like this person asking about blue cheese. People are intermittent fasting. People are having this reactive hypoglycemia. That's what it's coming from. That's where the attitude is coming from. Uh, Sasha, I don't know what face creams are the best. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, Brianna, we need to talk. Like, like when I literally talk to people and people are, are charging at me with, like, you know, almost like, who do you think you are to have an opinion? I'm like, you know, p often people have the wrong opinion, I, I, I do admit, but at least they have one. Maybe uh, an opinion I don't agree with. <laughs> but the point is to be flexible and to learn. So I'm going to speak strongly on things that I feel that I know. And I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to ask questions on things that I feel that I don't know. So if I'm talking strongly, I feel that I know, right? You listen to the words, I feel that I know. Just want a memory back, I won't work losing weight. Okay, there we go. Okay, Angie. But like I said, this is what I'm trying to tell Brianna. If you have to do keto the safe way, because people are like, I lost weight and I feel so good. <laughs> I mean, this week and next week I'm having a rebound effect. I'm plateauing my weight's gaining back. I can't sleep. My blood sugar shot up to 120. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. There's one dude that I love that did keto a while ago and online. I started intermittent fasting one meal a day. And I was like, oh, he looks terrible. <laughs> he looks so bad. He doesn't look well and right so everybody you know has conflicting opinions on what they think is great but i'll let you guys be the the judge and jury of what a 50 year old woman do i look unhealthy or sick okay just saying <sighs> gotta have a little bit of what is it confidence is it cockiness i don't know okay well, it's okay, Brianna, it's the way you phrased it. You said, so you're telling me this, that every single person, that's how you phrased it. I never said that every single person didn't adapt. I never even said that. I don't speak in absolutes. I can say that absolutely that I'm being sarcastic right now, but I don't speak in absolutes about science, right? It's to my belief. So when you're saying like, so every single person, it's the way you phrased it. And because I'm not speaking to you, it's, it reads very, very sarcastic. And you should be scared. You should be scared on keto. And you shouldn't just trust me. You should go and learn as much about your body as possible. Cauliflower is cool as long as you don't have any stomach distress from it. Uh, a lot of keto people follow me on IG. They're just selling ketone drinks. Exactly, Joel. I can't. Uh, one of the biggest, the biggest company came to me. What company was it? Uh... Um, uh, keto OS. They came to me, I think four years ago now, wanting me to do an affiliate partnership. And I told the owner before they went public, I was like, that stuff doesn't work. Because <laughs> I'm so honest. He's like, what do you mean it doesn't work? I'm like, well, if your blood glucose is high, you're not, those ketones are unviable. And that's only BHBs in the, in the bloodstream, bruh. And he was like, <laughs> I swear. Oh, they must hate me now, but I don't care. Okay, sour cream, no. No, the pro, no people. Just, it, no, bacon, yes. Uncured, uh, uh, free range, yes. No corn fed pork, yes. 
uh, I will let you, I will announce when the book is coming out. I'm still writing it. So when you write a book, you have to write it, photograph it, and then you have to edit it. And the editing process goes back and forth and back and forth. Once the, the editing process is done, then they can do a pre -re pre sale release. The marketing team does a pre sale release. So if you're not hearing about any of that, then I can't tell you about the official release date. when to check you check the blood sugar for different reasons is fitbit reliable it's like 50 60 percent reliable but that's good enough uh liquid diet for a couple weeks will destroy your adrenals and thyroid don't even do that you want to develop thyroid disease do that okay when to check blood sugar uh you can check blood sugar fasted and two hours two and a half two to two and a half hours post meals if you want to see the consistency of your blood sugar throughout the day you're welcome the pp project can we have the same breakfast every day? No, you have to, Rosie, you have to um, rotate foods or else you can develop a lot of inflammation from doing mono foods too much. We're not designed, we're designed to like be nomadic tribes and forage and that's what our body likes. And we're eating foods out of season. It kind of overwhelms the gut. That's why so many people have gut problems. If you're having headaches because your electrolytes are too low, go grab a glass, a 10 ounce glass of water, put a, a half teaspoon of Himalayan or Celtic salt in that glass and drink it and that should eliminate the headache. Your electrolytes are too low. Too low. Mac Jat 2007. Um, any uh, recommendations for increasing testosterone levels besides avoiding the proestrogenic soy? Oh yeah, like a billion things like get deep sleep because that's when your body releases growth hormone and testosterone. You guys need to get, if you went to bed, Preston, Check this out. If you went to bed by nine, like fell asleep in 10 minutes, right? And hit mm, four REM cycles, right? And have most of your sleep be deep sleep. And you diaphragmatic breathe. If you meditate, if you get enough electrolytes with Hannah asking about potassium, no, I don't take potassium because it is toxic to the liver. I eat spinach and, and avocado. So with Preston, so you, have, you want foods high in zinc. You want to make sure that you get your B complex. You want to make sure that you get your fat soluble vitamins. You want to get, make sure that you get in your micronutrients and you want to make sure that your guts is, is, uh, permeable and that, uh, I mean, you want to make sure not permeable. You don't want uh, big particles of food coming in, uh, B12 for energy, but you can get that through food, Sasha. You want to make sure that you can have food easily, easily into the, the, from the small intestine into the bloodstream without the junctions being too open, right? You want tight junctions. So small particles of food go into to your body and then you're becoming more absorptive instead of malabsorptive. I know I'm still on YouTube. Good, a good cheese still on YouTube. Once a month of drink, uh, don't do it, whatever you're drinking. Just drink water or lemon water or loose leaf tea. No heavy cream and fatty tea. Y'all, you all addicted to food. Can I have some cream? Can I have some sour cream? Can I have some cream cheese? No cream, it's got casein people. Love B12, what to eat? Red meat. <laughs> some red meat. Oop. Do some blood pudding. I'm being silly now. No cream cheese, y'all. All if you and you're not even talking about if it's if it's from an A to cow or if it's grass fed. You're just like, can I put green cream cheese and it can be a toxic mess and destroy your gut wall? Okay, does keto have weight? See the thing is like people are eating cheese and nuts and drinking coffee that never did it before and they're like why do i feel so bad i've been doing this for six months i'm like because you're following nonsense uh, i still have the business right i still have the business you guys I still have the business this business this is after doing keto for 10 years and the only reason why i'm in a sports bra is so no one can talk smack and say well i didn't see stephanie online and i didn't see her she was wearing a, like a big sweatshirt for like three months what happened to her? Okay, she, she, yeah, cream cheese is so bad for you. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> oh, how do you heal the gut wall? It's really simple, right? Rotate your foods, get deep REM sleep or deep sleep. Uh, make sure you're not eating the inflammatory foods that created the holes in the gut wall. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> make sure that you slow your eating process and make sure you've got enough stomach acid. Uh, cacao butter, but not raw cacao. Unfortunately, it's got, it's got mycotoxins and it's got caffeine. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> friend zone, ah, uh, but maybe I. H, what? 
Okay, let's see here. Stop drinking coffee no more. Uh, oh, no more nuts, cream, or cheese. Feel wonderful. Yes, but I don't like to talk about weight loss. It's not my thing. I like to talk about keto adapting first. Uh, can I swap bodies with you? You know what, Quentin? If we swap bodies, I would change your body in a year and make it like this. It will not like mine, but your genetic potential, I would like slam dunk that. Boom. I would mic drop it. Boom. Because it takes the mentality to change the body. Okay, I jumped in late on this live. Why is cream? Because it has casein. Casein pokes holes in the gut wall, you know, creates autism and violent behavior, poor glucose control, cancer, gut issues, histamine intolerance. I mean, it's it's a, it's it can't, like the IGF-1 factor. It you know, when when vegans say that that certain meats will uh, blunt the uh, insulin receptors and make you diabetic. It's because of poor quality foods. When is my Amazon package going to come? <laughs> Only grass-fed butter if you can. Like some people can't afford it, so they'll do organic. At least do organic if you can't afford grass-fed. Yes, yes. Can, uh, can, I, can I fried fatty chicken? Can you fry fatty chicken in coconut oil? I mean, coconut oil is like, no, like, it's not that stable, bruh. Like, lard is great to do deep fryer. Coconut oil, it can't, mm, it's got a smoke point. Mm -mm. I should do, like, a video to show you. Look how quick this smokes when I cook, use coconut oil. Okay, watch your cuts of pork and the way you prepare it. The same goes with beef. Honestly, I stick with lamb. No, Mark. No, don't stick with lamb. That's mono meats, and the body don't like that. Nope, nope. You gotta rotate. And uh, like the guy was asking about testosterone, women who've got uh, 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 low iron, it wouldn't be good to eat lamb. Okay, it's, this is a white meat. You want to eat red meat to get hemoglobin in. Don't listen to this person. I'm sorry, Mark. You are not correct. No. Mm mm. Because at one point when I was younger, I bled a lot in my menstrual cycle and I had to do, I did blood pudding when I lived in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I did red, but in 20 minutes your hemoglobin levels rise. Like it's amazing. So you have to put things into context, Mark. You got to put things into context. Okay, salad, salted butter, unsalted. I prefer unsalted because the salted butter tastes like salt. It's gross. I add a little salt on top of the unsalted. Almonds are toxic. Yep. What is it? All you taste is the coconut? I don't know what you mean by that. How long do you cook bone broth for? It depends. If you got a glutamate, if you have a glutamate problem, it's like six hours. If you don't, you can cook it for 20 to 30 hours. Yes, please do a video on frying meats. Okay. I will, Bruce, when I have time. Is caffeine bad yet? Ooh, it's so bad. Ooh. Brian, would you give it to a baby? Child? Caffeine raises cortisol. What does too much cortisol do? It's an inflammatory response. And the antioxidants in the bean have been, like, half of it have been cooked off when you roast it. Like, I don't know what these people are talking about. There are health professionals who are addicted to coffee saying, no, it's great, you know, it's like really high in anti antioxidants. Let's not talk about the glyphosate on it or the mycotoxins or the fact that you've got adrenal insufficiencies in your, and it's a diuretic and you guys are malabsorptive. Oh, blood pudding. Although Sasha blood pudding is normally with wheat, but that was back in the day before I did keto. Can we still have buffalo wings? Yes, no, please, no. Without the blue, street, blue cheese dressing? Yes. That would be like, you know, blue, like that would be baked wings or fried without anything, all the nastiness on it. No bread or crumbs. Results with lamb in the last two months. Yeah, but Mark, that's you. You can't speak for everyone, Mark. You just can't. And you might have a histamine re uh, response to these other meats. You got to say it worked for me and it may not work for other people to eat a bunch of lamb. And that may not do well in the long term. Creatine, you can get that from me at red meat. Don't touch that supplement. Nope. Yeah, blood, blood. Yeah, it's really good. It's well, the blood pudding I had before again had wheat in it, and it's like you fry it, and it's like meatloaf. It's really bizarre. Once you get past the fact that it's blood, it tastes pretty good. Okay. Uh, non supplements that are good for the gut. No. 
because if you've got uh, histamine issues, then the fermented foods aren't like good for the gut. But cruciferous vegetables have prebiotic, prebiotic, prebiotic fiber. If you're not doing keto, you could do some fruits, low fructose glycemic. Maria, you're a woman. Do you really want to get ballooned up with water and look like chubba hubba? No. You don't want to take anything that's from a lab if you don't have to. Almond milk, nope. Nope. Phytic acid, nope. You like bloody rare steak. That's cool. Do you have a video on how to start keto? Yes, a million. And I've, I did a how to start keto like two live broadcasts ago. Just look recently and I've got, it'll say it in the title. Uh, I got sick once going to Australia. I didn't have, because I did a, a month tour, speaking tour in Australia. I hit Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and I was a big part of my own tour. So I had to organize it and ticket sales and organizing the event and then I didn't get any sleep for weeks before and then I jumped on a flight for for what 16 hours into 17 hour time difference and then I just kept going when I got there my body was like and then I got on the plane all that bacteria my immune system was low from no sleep and then I got sick but besides that nope nope do you guys see me I talk almost every day you see me sick nope even the people at the gym are like you're never sick and I'm like I know Well, Jay, the blood pudding typically has, has wheat in it. So if you can find a non-wheat blood pudding, it's really good. What about organic grass-fed blue cheese dressing? I just said no. It's got casein in it. Watch the replay because I'm kind of repeating myself. Uh, you don't count the macros in avocado, just the fat. The 28 grams of monounsaturated fat. Oh, thank you, Natalie. This is the first time you see, you're seeing me ever? No, I get my branch chain amino acids from me. I don't need to take the BCA garbage. Just like, I, I made a joke on it on my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. Like, like I'll be passing dudes at the gym. I was like, what is that blue drink? They're like, oh, it's my, my BCAs. What's that orange drink? I'm like, that's chemicals. Okay, that's red dye number five. Okay, no. Just get your BCAs, your branch chain aminos from protein. Red meats particularly. <laughs> how, long does, how long do you saute your spinach grass-fed butter? Um pretty fast I mean it wilts pretty fast so you know a minute I use iron pan so I can preheat it on an iron skillet oh you follow me on Instagram cool Keyshell yeah Marcel I know wow the cheese addiction is like it's, it's crazy right because you have a, a serotonin dopamine response when you eat the cheese so you like become addicted to it and it just destroys your gut wall and like, what if it's organic? Like, what if it's organic? And I'm like, no, no, that's an addict right there. And people are like, why can't I do caffe caffeine? Yes, I said Swiss chard. Yeah, yes, I like Swiss chard. No, I don't have any kids. No BCAs. If I had kids, would you not? I mean, how could I hide that? How could I hide? Although I could have grown kids in theory. Like I could have a 30 year old kid. <laughs> You know, I could have a kid over there somewhere that's grown up. That's true. I didn't think about that. Uh, do I steam my veggies? No, I don't have a steamer. So I've either fried them or saladed them or baked them. Keto rash. Uh, Mono Lauren. That's what I suggest. Go Google it. She doesn't look 30 herself. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> It's so funny when I'm at the gym and these guys are all talking to me and I was like, and they say dumb stuff too. And I'll be like, okay, I'm asking, people are asking weird questions. Um, so thank you, Gucci King. So the guys, the nutritional yeast in small amounts because there's a lot of carbohydrates. So the guys will come up to me in the gym and they'll start trying to chat me up and, um, and they're kind of flirting with me and I'm like, you know, you're only like 24, right? You're like, you're probably about 24 and I'm 50 going on 51. And it's like, then I'm like, do I tell them or do I not? So I went on the, the rampage of not telling them. And then I was like, no, I'm going to tell them almost to get the reaction. And then I'm like, 
I don't always have to announce my age. Although for keto, I think I should to let, just to let you guys know that black can crack and it can sag. If the collagen is gone, it's going to hang like a sharp pain. You're going to have that hanging gobbler from too much cortisol. That's what it's from, you know, or the, the estrogenic like triceps, right? That's from too much estrogen and that's not indicative of color. Color doesn't matter. Like, mm. Okay, so I, I'm addicted to food, just confused, say, some say cheese, but Stephanie doesn't, okay? So I tell people things they don't want to hear because I actually get people into ketosis. These are people talking out of their, you know, the side of their mouth. They don't know what they're talking about, period. There's no proof that they're getting people into ketosis. They just do it because it makes money. Because people who try to make, capitalize on keto, who tell you what you want to hear, don't think that they can make a dollar. And how do I know that? Because I've spoken to some of the people that put out books that tell me this. You can't tell people the truth because they won't buy it. And I'm like, well, I guess they're not going to be buying as much as my product because I'm not going to lie. But people do. At the end of the day, people who follow me know that I'm straight to the point. I'm no nonsense. You should rotate all meats, even including salmon. And I mean, that could be every three to four days to incorporate it into your diet. So you can have salmon like three times a week. Fatty sheep, sausage, good from... I don't know, Edward, where you're getting the source sausage or you're making it yourself because if you're buying it, it's probably cured in sugar. Nightshades, bad for joints. Uh, yeah, with a lot of people, Billy, not going to lie. Collagen supplements are good to use. Make sure that it's from a grass-fed cow and it's really of high quality because everybody's doing collagen now and, and some of them are from uh, poor quality uh, factories. Uh, bingo, flabby arms. <laughs> and Murphy says, 10% uh, Asian. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> How can you look 10% Asian? I don't think people looked at that. That doesn't make any sense. 10% Asian. <laughs> Uh, I exercise six days a week, not to build, but just because I enjoy it. My daughter was addicted to cheese, yes. So she gave it up and lost 12 pounds. Her face cleared up. Exactly, cheese and people's acne. I don't even get me started. You guys, look at your skin quality. I can't stand people say, I eat cheese and it's like, I'm fabulous. You know, I mean, I eat two cheese and nuts. And then you're looking at them in their face and they've got that caffeine big pores in their face. I'm like, and you, how do you tell someone? You look horrible. I'm sorry, you don't, I mean, horrible in the sense of health. Darwin's is, Darwinism's natural selection. And nine, the 10 creeps, what, what, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, creeps are coming out, out, what? Nine, the creeps are coming out? I don't know what you mean. Is it okay to satisfy hunger with extra broccoli? No, use fat, Marcus, not, not carbohydrates. Uh, for the new people, I follow Stephanie for almost a year and you will soon realize that she is right. Yes, LG, thank you. I wish I'd listened to her advice, 100, what, uh, to advice 100% from the beginning. She's right. Thank you, LG. Uh, oh my, she said, oh my God, constipation, natural ways to help with, with the problem. Well, Elaine, you might have a thyroid issue. Unless you've, I don't know how long you've had your constipation. You might have uh, a gut dysbiosis, SIBO, and you might have a, uh, uh, candida overgrowth, which will make you lock up your bowels. Uh, I just would need to talk to you more personally to know what your thyroid symptoms are coming from, to know if it's, I mean, thyroid, uh, constipation, if it's coming from, uh, thyroid, if it's coming from a fungal infection or if it's coming from stress. I don't know. Uh, you're welcome, Marcus. How many clients of yours stay in ketosis for the long haul? About 5%. <laughs> And I'll get people like, oh, Stephanie, remember I had a consultation with you four years ago and I did it for like seven months and then I jumped off and now I want to do it again. And, you know, and some people will be like, can you send me the meal plan that you created like five years ago? I'm like, it, it, that's not null and void now. Like I've evolved. So whatever I said five years ago, I will not say today. Uh, do you drink occasionally? Never. Mark, I am 50 and fabulous, honey. And I do not need to do that. Toxic garbage anymore all the things i did when i was younger i'm done with like as you can see i'm cranked up i get hyped i can dance on a bar table without not one drink in me because i just you know i'm excited about everything i'm just pumped well i'm not excited about dumb people i mean dumb as in sense of low eq and self-absorbed people but everything else super excited about uh, what should caffeine withdrawals? Uh, yes, anxiety. Uh, definitely keto would be good. I wish I could talk to you personally. 
Uh, DLPA or L-tyrosine might help with getting off of caffe caffeine. L-tyrosine or DLPA in caps. Anxiety is a whole other subject I wish I had more time. I don't even know how you're eating or sleeping or drinking or anything, drinking water or not. Do you do full body workouts? I do full body workouts. Yeah, I don't separate because Bruce, I no longer train heavy anymore because I used to be a pro skateboarder and I fracked my stuff up and I broke up, broke a lot of stuff. I no longer train heavy and to be honest, I spend most of my workout doing calisthenics. Uh, glutamine uh, can be good to help seal the gut wall, but you can't rely on supplements. You can't take glutamine and then expect your gut to seal if you're not sleeping deep enough. Uh, what do you, th what do you, what do you, what are you liking guys? Can I get a bit nerdy on, on some topics? Alcohol? No. Uh, what are your symptoms of allergic reaction to lemons? Uh, that would be like itchy, scratchy, thick, irritated, bad sleep, really, really tired. Uh, thought on guys. I'm going to end this broadcast with no more keto questions because I'm, I'm over it. And, uh, as you can see, I start talking fast and I get really snarky. So, uh, I kind of get a headache from talking about this stuff all the time. <gasps> oh, so what do I like in guys? Can I get a bit nerdy? Yeah, that'll be fun, Jay. Um, craving sweets, high fat. Any tips on ba bags that help you get some sleep and li liver, kidney? You need to really pay attention. Uh, alcohol is an addiction, yes. Night shift workers, already talked about it. Thoughts on CLA pills? Nope, garbage. Get your CLA slays from... Uh, uh, from from protein, real good, healthy quality, CLA, like eggs, uh, as opposed to keto. Or you, would you need a drink? Have kids? Would you? Need, you would need a drink if you had kids. How very funny, Sasha. My dental hygienist asked if I was keto because I started. Yeah, right, 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 right. Because fixes your teeth. What's up, Deborah? Love me some Deborah. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay. <laughs> I'm at 5, 18 days straight, keto, just normal way. She's, Deborah's amazing. She's in my keto course page. You guys have a keto course page. If it's a, it's a, uh, no hummus, that's carbs, chickpeas, doop. I'm going to answer that question about guys soon. I'm just getting these last questions and I'm going to stop. I started keto intermittent fasting two weeks ago. Girl, you better stop. You lost muscle, honey, and you lost water. Now what? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you have boils. Oh, so I'm being rude. Sorry, Sarah. Uh, you have boils. Oh, this candida, uh, you have candida die off probably. Maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, don't fast. Please don't do that. Energy. Energy. Thank you for your time. And up. thank you, Marcus. How much is high carbs? Yes, Janae is right. Love, miss, <laughs> love and miss my Stephanie. Energy, energy, energy. Thank you, Preston. Uh, plug my book. Okay, I'm writing a book, but it's not out yet. I can't tell you the name until I am done writing it. But also, I'm doing, I'm going to do a bunch of stuff with keto. But right now, I do consultations. And right now, I have a keto course page that you have to sign up for. It's $15 a month, but it is worth it. Worth it, worth it, worth it. And you can do it just one month if you want or more than one. For night shift, would it be safe to stay a week out of, out of keto until job changes? Probably. Uh, you're welcome, Salma. Bye. Thank you. I've learned a lot. Thank you, Gloria. She has a book. I'm writing a book, book Belly. Thank you, Carrie. So ketogenic, ketogenic diet, good for overall health. It's amazing. It's amazing. Damien, like, like words can't even, like, watch my videos. Yes. <laughs> uh, I a consultation. You go to stephanieperson.com and then there, I have a calendar and then you just find the time because I put certain times and then you just click on it and book yourself. But I'm full booked until Sunday. So wait till Sunday if you want to get a consultation. You need my book now. I need to finish writing it. Love you too, Deborah. Oh, energy, energy. I uh, heard of an interesting podcast, Finney, about metabolic re rebound. You know, I'm starting to love Finney more and more. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. Yeah, he's talking about intermittent fasting is dangerous with your electrolytes. Like, yo, when one of my favorites tells me something I already know, it's like validation. Love me some Finney. Okay. Uh, what is it? How so? Thanks. Okay, Dr. Finney. Yeah, okay, he's, he's, he's epic. I, I just love that dude. But like his book had horrible recipes. He was telling people to do like, like, like monosodium glutamate, like bouillon cubes. I hope he's changed since then. Do you review lab private consultation? No, because I can get sued because I'm not a doctor. Nope. You have to discuss it with me and then I can tell you what I think. But I cannot read your labs. People try to email. Child, people like, they are constantly sending me their labs. I'm like, stop doing that. Not only do I not want to do that, legally I'm not able to do that. Oh, yeah, you're right. I should do it in my video description. I'm a bad capitalist. Let me tell you, James Claus. 
He's like, link your website. I know, right? I don't even think of it. I'll do that after. Wait, I did do that. Wait a minute. I do link my website in my description of all my videos. Wait a minute. I'm not. I, okay, I'm a decent capitalist. There, there, there. I thought you meant in the title for a minute because I wasn't paying attention. You're so bleeping lost. Good book to read, Clueless Dude. Yeah, Harley. Yes, like my book is going to be comprehensive. Like I'm going to make it like ABC123 that everybody can read it and not get bored. Because I don't like reading a bunch of textbooks. I get, <sighs> can you get through to the point, please? Uh, how much protein for a woman between 45? I don't know who you are, Wendy. Like I need to know your athlete, your age, if you're active, inactive. Like do you have gout? Do you have your acid problems? Like child, I need to know. But it's normally between, with women, it's between 45 and 60, but really 45 and about 50. Three. Project your what? J. Alexander, that's right. Oh, protect your eyes, yes. Okay, also, do you want to recommend pre workout? Nope, please, no pre workout. Damien, I work out, look, yo, boof, 50. No pre workout. You never will adapt. You're going to destroy your adrenal glands. Don't even do that. Don't even talk about pre workout garbage. No. Plus, all those toxins and Chemicals they use to preserve that garbage, please. You're killing me. No, no, no. Thank you, Lulu. Thank you. Okay, no more questions. I'm going to talk about boys for a minute. Yes, Maria, until you're adapted. That's how long, 200 grams of fat. Okay. Thank you, LG. See you on the next live broadcast. Don't you guys don't forget to push the bell notification so when I go live, you'll know when I'm going live. Thank you for everybody who liked the stream uh, because you can see the like ratio is higher than the amount of people in the chat. But yeah, Mark is right about the pre-workouts being like, Pfft. okay. So I'm going to talk to you about, I'm doing, I want to do two things. Like I'm starting to do story time at the end of my talks because I just get so tired of talking about keto. Blech. Blech. <laughs> I get tired of talking about that, like, oh, I get a headache. I won't talk about anything else. So this is when people are like, oh my God, you're going off topic. Yes, I'm going off topic. And if you don't like it, go to someone else. Go watch someone else who tells you to eat cheese and nuts and intermittent fast and drink coffee and bulletproof coffee and eat the carnivore diet. Because I am not the person you want to follow if you're telling me how to act in my own live my own broadcast. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay. Yeah, Wendy's like, girl, talk, yes. Okay. Oh, thank you, me. Um, I know, I need to have moderators. I'm not organized yet. Like, as long as I'm doing this book, I'm a mess. Skateboarding, yes. Oh, boy. Okay. So, uh, what I like in a guy, right? Because I've avoided this subject to the point where people might think that I'm a lesbian, which there is like, hallelujah to the lesbians. Like, love you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But no, I like the boys. So let me talk about, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Maddie. So this is this is digression heaven right now. Why <laughs> don't you get a pen, Mark? So let me get a pen and caps. I am no longer talking about keto right now. Who, who's, who's ever annoyed that I don't do my broadcast professionally? Go to another channel because I'm not going to talk about keto right now. So, or it's not going to be the main subject. So what I like, what I've noticed is when people smile. A smile will crush my heart every time. I don't care if you are toe up for the flow up. Okay, I don't care how fat you might be. If you smile with sincerity, digression time, exactly. You got me, boom. Right there, I'm like, oh. I love when people smile. Now, women smile at me more than men, ironically. Um, they're not so uncomfortable if they do, let's say if they do smile, because a lot of them are just looking hangry, all, not hangry, they're, they're hangry. <laughs> they got resting batch face. Thank you, Deborah. you're so friggin' awesome as well. 
So when a guy smiles at me, this is what I noticed. Cause like I go from my apartment to the store errands, uh, and, and typically with my bicycle to the gym and home. That's my life right now. Like I, uh, somebody said I smiled at a woman. What? Did somebody say? Did I miss that comment? Somebody said I smiled at a woman and something happened. But you gotta remember. I'm not the typical girl. Because I don't care how much money you have in your pocket. I don't care if you got a job or not. I don't care if you're homeless. If you smile at me and let me be, that's the best. That's the best. So what I notice is that people don't smile anymore, especially living in Los Angeles. Oh, you're okay, you're, you smile at women all the time and you're in Forrest Gump. So the thing is, is that if you don't linger, cause there are a few guys in my gym, I'm like, you are lingering too long, okay? You are lingering too long. You are making me put my head down and avoiding all eye contact because you're creeping too much. And you don't smile, you just creep in. And there's a couple guys, thank you, was it Varney? Thank you. Um, there's a few guys that are creepers, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, bro, if you just smiled and left me alone, I would be like so open to just say hello to you one day. Uh, Guys like to look more than they talk. Yes, and I get that. They want to look, but they, they side-eye you, you know. They creep. And I'm just checking to make sure it's not my Amazon. Let's see. Nope. This is my literary lawyer. Okay, so... Um, the problem is, is that I feel... Like, I have guys walk up to me in the gym and they'll dap me. And I'm like... Where are your manners? Unless you're sweating like a pig, don't dap me. Say hello, give me a hug, kiss on the cheek, but don't dap me. Okay, I know that I am a strong female and I come across as like an alpha and all this stuff, but chivalry will get you everywhere for the creepers. Um, okay, that's still my phone going off. Okay. I've been here talking for over an hour, two hours, and I still haven't drinking this whole cup of water. That's bad. So, the thing that annoys me is that um, I'll have guys, they'll look right through me. I'll be like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, what? what? Like, did you get a lobotomy when you were a kid? Like, what is wrong with you? When they're far away, they're looking at you to check you out. Up close? They act like they don't see you. They'll look over your head. It's the weirdest thing ever, ever. And yes, they're intimidated. And the thing that's just, it's just sad because we are losing the ability to just look into each other's eyes, give a little smile and just keep walking. That to me is like, it's such a beautiful thing because it's so rare that it happens that I'll see an unattractive guy who smiles and I'm like, the humility in that individual is just breathtaking. The fact that they're not entitled by the way that they look. They're not entitled, entitled because I live in a city of models and actors and people are so entitled that they think that they deserve something or people, guys who will rate you, right? They'll rate you. They'll be like, you know, they're, they're rating you. Like I listen to guys talk about females like, oh, this is gross. And that is gross. And this is gross. And I'm like, have you looked in the mirror, bruh? Like, what are you talking about? You are nasty as nasty. You're nastier than a baboon's crack. And you are rating women. It, it behooves me that you can be so gross and sit there and talk about how, and so being in the city that I'm at, I mean, every girl's walking around like this. This is what I see at the gym all day long. 
they got the, the them injections yo and like girls are getting the lip injections like almost every girl in a certain age demo in this city has got those lip injections and it makes women when men start like i thought just i thought men just love women like i didn't know that they had to like that instagram would create this ridiculousness so i see women doing things to their body and it's the saddest thing you've ever seen it's just so it's the, because i'm 50 like this stuff doesn't hit me it's like i'm so bored I almost do the opposite. Like I'm not do like I don't have breast implants. I'll never get breast implants unless, you know, like I have like some disease and one is gone. Uh no cacao. Well this 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 is story time right now. We're talking about oh caca. Oh you said caca. Because <laughs> she's in caca. So that's what I like in a guy, a guy who just smiles. And that's just to make it simple. I could talk about intelligence and I could talk about a sense of humor, but that would be like whatever to me if you can just be socially um intelligent enough to be able to smile at somebody with your back straight without wanting or lingering not expecting anything then that will always get me to stop and i will give a hundred percent of myself to a person who has just that simple kind human connection and then if i start breaking down what i think is physically attractive I mean, obviously it has a lot to do with how somebody takes care of themselves from the inside out. And, you know, because I know so much about keto, some people I'll meet guys who they stink, right? They stink. They, they've got that really gross smell because they're doing too many protein shakes because they were taught that. And I'll be like, that kind of stuff I don't judge because, or people who eat wrong, they're like, yeah, I'm supposed to do 400 grams of carbs to carb load and I'm eating ding dongs and ho-hos. Um, it's, I mean, when a person comes to you and they're not perfect, I don't care as long as people have the ability to want to learn anything. So another thing that I like is when people who are not triggered or defensive. So if you have a conversation with each other and you don't agree, it doesn't, it's just like, okay, well, we don't agree, but it feels like, um, people are very triggered today in just in general, guys are very, very triggered. And um, it's just, yeah. So these are the things that I really like when people are very tolerant and very, uh, like they're chill, like they don't react off of everything. Uh, somebody's on a protein shake drink. Um, something crazy about how much your brother and your brother... Well, I hope so. I mean, Jared, it's the fact that men now, like, people are like, oh, you intimidate guys. I hear this all the time. And if you saw me at a party or at, um, at the gym, I would give you 100%. I always feel that it's a privilege if somebody walks up to me to say hello. I don't feel bothered that they're interrupting my workout. As long as they're respectful to me, I feel like it's a privilege that somebody comes up and has the confidence to say hello you know, like what's your diet like? I see you're in great shape. I stop everything. I put the weight down and I give them as much human love as possible because that's what's missing. That is what's missing to me. That people are always in a hurry and they're like, um, and no, cause the more you keep saying over and over the same thing in the chat, I just, no, 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 no. that's not unique to be saying the same word 5,000 times. Uh, you, you work in retail and see the types of behaviors that you mentioned. Yeah. So it's just, you know, there's just like people today are too triggered. People today, because I coach people, they're, they don't sleep well. They, uh, uh, they're on their cell phones in bed. Like they don't ground them. They're not like just away the cell phone thing. I, I, I just, a guy can look perfect on the outside, but if I see him like on a leg extension, every set looking at his phone, I instantly lose all interest because they're constantly needing that distraction. It's just something that's so, uh, so uninteresting. Dulce says, I wish you were lived near me. I feel the same way, the same way, the same about people. 
So uh, I have my phone in the gym, but I didn't like, I literally will only look at my phone to change my music and I won't look at it. So I put, I start putting my phone on silent. So I don't want to look at it. I don't, I'm just disgusted by cell phones. It's just, dis I did a consultation with a woman who works as a real estate agent yesterday who does her all her business from her cell phone. And I'm like, so you're on your phone all day, every day. And I was like, so you're that lazy to even turn, flip your, your Mac open and get on your laptop. Like, so these are the things that I appreciate. Like if you go out to eat with somebody and the phone just doesn't exist, it's like, wow, like that's unusual for me because every, like, I would say nine out of 10 times, if not 10 times out of 10 times, uh, people have the phone and they, they have to look at it at some point in that lunch or in that dinner period. So, um, I think that's it guys. I've been speaking over two hours and I just wanted to when I talk about keto, I get a little cracked out, get a little attitude-y. Um, but when I talk about life, I feel like way more relaxed. You see, guys need to learn how to be gentlemen again, and girls need to, what? Need to get classy, kindness, compassion, humility. Humility needs to come back into the trend, but it's not going to. I really see by being on Instagram myself, how much, I'll post a picture of myself there are two things that people love on my Instagram. One, me in a bikini. No joke. Two, food. Everything else, I mean, I have one video of me doing a handstand push-up, uh, but okay, like freestanding, no wall. But if I, um, people need to self-reflect, but they can't. They don't even know that they're not self-reflecting. So when I talk to people who are distracted and there's like an invisible fly around their head and they're, they don't give you eye contact, I don't like it, but I understand that that's the climate of our society today. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm 50, so I've literally watched. Like, I started traveling when I was 19 over to Europe and we did tours. Like, I toured for five years out of a van. Every time we had to make a phone call, we had to find like a phone booth. Like you had to be really resourceful as some people are resourceful. You had to really, 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 really be resourceful to travel. I always had like, if you're in the car, or you're on a train, you're always opening up these street maps. And uh, Kino Body goes to my gym from time to time. It's a trip. So I don't know him, but it's so funny just as a quick side note. So somebody was like, Oh my God, you're in the background of Kino Body's video on his stories. And I was just like, he just keeps to himself. When he goes to my gym, I don't think almost anybody recognizes A few people recognize him, but that's it. Uh, and I don't watch him enough to even care, to be honest. Like, whatever. Uh, I should have more subscri subscribers, Donnie, but I say stuff that people don't want to hear. So if I told people to... to um, follow my 90 day, and I've said this a million times, if I say follow my 90 day, you know, weight loss program, like, it's like, follow my 90 day weight loss program and get shredded on keto, and people would buy my stuff, I would be filthy rich. I can't, you know? I just hate talking about weight loss. Now, I do talk about it in consultations, but not as the primary subject. The subject is always about trying to get more healthy and mentally healthy and stable. Um, but um, hold on, guys. My phone is hot. Okay. So, Anthony Gucci, I had to put you in timeout. You are actually giving me a headache. Like, too super poor impulse control. Not attractive. Rick James, I've spoken about Dr. Berg in videos so many times to the point where I'm even bored. 
and I don't subscribe to his methodology, but you're going to have to take that up with him. Don't have a Janet Jackson moment? What's that? Yeah, that Anthony guy, like, when you guys watched the replay, it was like, dude, you are friggin' cray-cray with all them comments. Yeah. Dr. Berg, he's really, really good. Birth control is horrible. He, it's, he's really, you guys know I'm not talking about keto no more. I'm like over it. I get super sarcastic. And that's not all the colors of my personality. You're welcome, Rick. Yeah. I mean, he's talking about vinegar. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always say, it, what's this guy? His name is, I forget what his name Like, every time I try to think of his name, he was at the Paleo FX conference that I went to speak at. Uh, I forget his name. P P Paul, Paul Check. This, you guys got to Google Paul Check. That dude's a trip, bruh. Like, he is a trip. Like, I'm not always in love with his, like, weird personality, but he says some stuff that I'm like, mic drop. He's like, everybody who tells you, like, uh, uh, like, tells you to buy this product, product and do this and do that should do their presentations on YouTube without a shirt on. Yeah, he's amazing. He's so smart. But he's like, and you see Paul Check's first videos, he never has a shirt on. And you're like, this dude is weird, right? Because he looks weird. A skateboard story? Uh, and then I definitely should go. Um, skateboard story. I got a lot of them. My brain's like, which one do I tell? I got some crazy stories. I'm not going to lie. Okay, here's one skateboard story for you guys, and then I'm going to go. Okay, I'm not talking about the body anymore because I get too sarcastic. <laughs> I think good Billy you crash. Okay. Um, ideal date for stuff, Keisha. Um, I'll do that in the next one. Remind me, next live broadcast, I'll tell you the ideal date for me, which would be with no phone, clearly, and eye contact. Um, but, so I'm going to tell you a quick story. I've got crazy stories, like... I've got stories where people have let pit bulls loose uh, on me and said, go get the nigger when I was dealing with some, uh, some uh, skinheads. Uh, one time I've had a lot of skinhead uh, situations when I was younger. But with that said, let me tell you another story. So when I first started skateboarding um, in the 80s, 1984. Now I know a lot of you guys weren't even born by then, but um, I know, oh, we talking about Super Bowl with her like, you know, bosom expo explodes, exposed. Okay, so, um, oh, your first live, 40, 50 fitness. Okay, so I, um, when I started skateboarding, the parks, I started skateboarding in the 80s. So in the 70s, there was, and I, I, I you know, I was born in, out in Los Angeles. So I was born, I'm a Cali girl. So, although I lived in Europe a long time, but in, in the um, 70s, people skated parks, cement parks all over the place. It was weird. The only half pipes they had were these flexi glass things. I would never skate that now because that stuff's slippery. But there'd be these flexi glass U-shaped obstacles with no platform at the top, right? And they would just do these turns. You know, one day I'll do a video and I'll pull out, uh, I'll do a YouTube live and I'll pull out some old skateboard vid videos of me so you guys can be like, whoa, she did skate. Um, because I started skateboarding pre-internet, so you don't see a lot of stuff on, of me on the internet. <laughs> but with that said, um, uh, I, so when I started skateboarding, ramps became vids, vids, vids. Okay. Um, I did have to skate a few empty pools, but they're really tight with a lot of vert. So they're really, really hard to skate. I always felt that pools were really, really hard, and there wasn't a lot of abundant, and the only backyard pools I skate were like peanut bowl things, and those are really tight transition and a lot of vert. So, um, uh, so when I started skateboarding, ramps started coming in because parks, parks died out because, you know, people didn't understand the insurance problems with kids hurting, breaking stuff every day, and parks, the insurance, they would be suing, they'd be like, be too expensive for the insurance insurance rates. So a lot of parks got closed down because a lot of parks got sued. And so in the 70s, they all like went away. Or most of them did. did. Uh, so then ramps became, started spawning up because you could build a wooden ramp 
in your backyard and have your own skate spot. So I started skateboarding in the backyard ramp day. So now girls do, they can do McTwists, uh, they can do 540s, they can do all kind of like stuff that I never did because there's par parks are back now. And so I never had one spot. Like it would come up for a, a couple weeks and then go away. Like you'd have spots, right? So when I first started skating, I started skating embankments. So you do like shipping hall and like an embankment, like loading, and I would skate those, be a curb on top. So I'd learn how to do like board slides because we used to have rails on the bottom of our boards and you do board slides and rock and rolls, all this kind of stuff, rock to fakie in these, in these embankments. And then um, these ramps started uh, coming up and I had never even skated a mini ramp at that point. They were all like either 10 to 12 foot ramps. Sup for the funny comedy. Thank you. Liar loaded. Was it? Lolita. Uh, so, uh, I got a lot of crazy stories of skateboarding, you guys. Like, I am not kidding. From scary stories of guys trying to rape me in a hotel room down to just stupid stories. So, here's a stupid story. Or, you know, like the one time that pit bulls, the piece people let pit bulls uh, um, loose on me. And I'm like running to get away, from, get away from two pit bulls from skinheads. But, so, um, so... There's a, there was a ramp that came up. Um, now, now I have another story about when I first had, learned how to drop in. I'll tell that in another video. And the, but that was like the spot where I kind of learned how to skate. And it was always like, I don't know, 18 to 20 people. And we call them snake se sessions. When you have all these guys on the platform. So it's a U-shaped thing and you've got a platform. And then you've got a ton of guys on one side and a ton of guys on the other. And there's no law. There's no rule. First person into the ramp gets the ride. Well, a lot of people will crash into each other. So I've seen compound fractures, teeth flying out of the mouth. When people slam into each other going really, really fast, uh, I've seen a lot of blood skateboarding. So this particular time, I'm going to this backyard ramp that a kid had, his parents had let him put this, I think it was a 10 and a half foot ramp in his backyard. Yes, that's my, my balance is solid because of that. And I'm sure it life is skateboarding. Well, I'm actually... I'm actually writing a script on my life as this skateboarder. But anyway, uh, that's a whole nother thing. I put that on hold though. But so um, I go to this backyard ramp and this kid was like, and, and the way it was back in the 80s is like, you had to be super in with the owner of a backyard ramp or you had to be like famous or somebody cool. So a lot of the times people would get rejected to be able to skate certain ramps if you weren't cool enough. So... I go to this ramp, this kid's like, you can skate, and this, this kid and his parents, I don't know how they allowed this, allowed us to skate in the ramp when they were, were not home, like unlock the back door, uh, backyard door and go into to this gated ramp area, and the ramp was probably like 16 feet wide, and which is not very wide, it was small, like two and a half foot wide platforms, so you, uh, when I was skateboarding, you always had to run up. There was, if there wasn't a ladder or stairs, you had to run up to the top and pull your body over the, the platform, which is kind of part of the reason why I became so athletic. So I arrived. So, okay. So I unlatched the, the, the gate and I go into, yeah, I'm a Virgo. Yes, I'm definitely a Virgo. So I go into the backyard and there's three guys. And what do these three guys do that happens to happen to me all the time? They start laughing. They start laughing because there's a, not only am I a girl, but I am a black girl. <laughs> Stop! You're killing me, Hammer Tam. Nope, 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 nope. Like a black girl skateboarding? No. They're like, "Where's the popcorn? We're gonna watch this girl completely break her shite." So they're laughing at me. I'm like, you laugh, mother suckers. Okay, you gonna laugh. Because I was a sponsored skateboarder by then. So I'm watching them and they don't even know how to drop in. I was like, you fools are making fun of me. You can't even drop in, bruh. You can't even drop in. Bye, Holly. Get your queen, Randy. So I'm watching, I'm putting on my, and I used to do this all the time. I put on my pads real slow. So they would just think I was a dumb girl. So I go to the ramp and they're laughing. And I mean, I'm a teenager at this point. So I'm like skating from the bottom, right? And it's called gyrating. Yes, it's, it's, it's a gyrating skateboard term where you're going back and forth and back and forth. And then you start to do kick turns. So you're turning, 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 turning backside, back, turning backside, turning front side to get closer and closer to the top of the ramp because I wanted them, them to think that I couldn't skate. So I started off real slow. 
So then I pop up to the top of the ramp and I go to put my board over the edge and they're like, are you going to drop in? I was like, duh. <laughs> so I drop in, I start doing 50-50 grinds. I start doing boards like Fakey, right? I used to do like Ollie hangups. I, was, I started doing backside disasters and hand plays. I was like, what? Frontside airs, what? Indie airs, what? And they were like, oh. Oh. <gasps> They were freaking out. And one of the guys says, today's the day I'm gonna drop in. I am never gonna let a girl be better than me. Which I've heard many times in my skateboard career at that time, because no girl skated, like very few. So the guy goes to drop in, I'm like, no, 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 put on my helmet. And, sandbag. And he's like, I don't need a helmet. I go, please, 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 please put on my helmet, please. And he's like, fine. So he pushes the helmet down right but he doesn't strap it on the chin and then he proceeds to put his board over the coping to then drop in and i'm like telling him this is what you need to do you probably need to hold on to the nose get used to this feeling because the problem is when you first had to learn how to drop in with the ramp that has vert on it you free fall before the wheels catch the transition and a lot of people just board goes one way body goes another way and they just slam they just geek their body out so this guy goes and I'm begging him to let, let me tell him how to learn how to drop in. He won't listen to me. So this is what happens. He puts his board, his coat board over the coping, right? And then you stand and then you put your front foot down and you drop in, allow the board to hit the wall and you go down. So um, what happens? Board goes this way, body goes this way. Helmet's not strapped chin diving and i don't know why a lot of people they uh somebody's like hey, hey billy just listen to the story because somebody's like i can't stop drinking so he hits his head here splits it open hits his chin and hits his head so he gets a concussion and then his chin is just gushing blood gushing blood Yeah. All because he couldn't stand that a girl was better than him. He was like insistent on like learning how to drop in that day because he wasn't going to allow a girl. So he literally fell he, and he was sitting there unconscious on the bottom of the floor. I mean, of the, of the flat bottom of the ramp. And at the end of the day, I had, because we were all kids, right? So I had to drive him to the emergency room and I stayed there with him. That's one story. That's one story. All right, guys, thank you for joining the broadcast. It's two and a half hours of talking. I did not expect to go this long. Uh, Erica, I did a lot of talking about fasting. I'm against it, and I explained why, so watch the replay. So thank you, you guys. Here we go. You know what? It's just I'm just really athletic. I've always been, and I love learning. So that combo sometimes makes people intimidated. I don't know why, because anytime somebody's better than me at something, I can't get enough. I'm like, please teach me, show me the way. That's how I, how, how I have always been. I remember when I first started learning about keto and I'd spoken to a few doctors, I would literally like tear, the, I, would like, I would munch their ear off. This is, if this was their ear, I'd be like, I'm like, please, like I literally, what up, Romeo? So that's, um, that's a dope story. <laughs> thank you, Joel. So that's uh, a story I told. Um, thank you, Larry, 5200. And uh, I'm going to start doing more story time at the end of my videos because I get literally tired talking about the body. And um, I want to say, night, Pamela. I want to tell, please do not DM me if you don't like what I'm doing because I don't care. I'm 50 years old and I'm stubborn. I'm stuck in my ways. I am not changing. It's the craziest thing when people try to tell you how to do a live broadcast. Like, can I give you some notes? And I'm like, no, I don't know who you are. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't even know. I'm very aware of what I'm doing. And I'm doing things that make me happy. If they don't make you happy, go somewhere else. So after this broadcast, mm, nope, don't care, won't listen, do not DM me and tell me how to do a live broadcast because I will not listen. At all, not even to a word. Yep. You will never skateboard, Jay. Uh, if I showed you how, you could do a little bit. 
So 40-50 fitness, I'm not doing any more keto stuff because I'm over it. I've been on the broadcast for almost two and a half hours. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I should probably go. Thank you, Larry and Arthur and Romeo and Joel. There's so many guys left. <laughs> and Curtis and Jay. <laughs> All the women left when I start talking about skateboarding. And Mark. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That is too funny. <laughs> Bye, Chrissy. Chrissy's here. Oh, uh, really organic. So I'm a lady. She's all in caps. Thank you. Love you too, Mark. Are we, uh, I love you guys too. Thank you for joining the broadcast and I'll come back. So anybody out there who hasn't liked up the stream, even on the replay, like it up if you still want me to uh, continue to do these live videos. And I'm ending with stories. And if you feel like it's too long, you can just stop watching because, you know, that's all you got to do. Thank you, LG. And I'm out. Bye, guys. You love the stories. I know next time I should ask people, who wants the stories, who doesn't? Thank you, Leisha and Keto Princess. We got a few females back in the house. Bye. Bye, guys. Till next time. Yep. It's really awesome. I'm very lucky. I feel very fortunate to have lived this life. Thank you, guys.